Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. It's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and I'm joined with Stephen. Uh, we're both Collector Geeks tonight. Um, yes, <laughs> so we're it's, uh, yeah, we're representing the the geek, geekdom. Um, I, I I'm in the process of sorting out my magazine non Warren collection. Like I should really state that because I my my, my Warren collection I. That would be too much. I'd just be like doing that for years. Um, but I'm sorting out my like my good girl magazine collection. So it, I'm going to be showing a bunch of that. And in the process, like it, it's so disorganized. Like you'll see what I mean when I show some of the random books that were mixed in with my magazine collection. It just doesn't even make sense. So I'll be showing some pretty cool books as well. That good. are like, kind of key key magazine books. Cool. Um, and you brought some cool stuff too, right? I did. I have. I have a. Ver I have various and assorted, and I have some uh, other other little stuff. Uh, I have some. Uh, uh, I won't say housekeeping, but I had some interesting historical stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you'd like me to start with that and and just get that uh, get that yeah, done. We'll show, we'll show a bunch of stuff. So one one sec here. I just want to say hi to the audience first. Sure. Um. Hey, Kimunin. Hey, Matt. Andreas. Hi, Matt. And that's it. We're done. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Not a, oh, wait. Oh, and hi, Werewolf. And hi, Kenneth. Wow. Okay. So, yes. See, I, I said hi to everybody. I'm not a bad host for once in my life. Yes, you're you know. a bad host. Uh, oh, wait. There's another guest joining us. He's actually the best of us all in terms of hosting capability. There. Now, here we're we're all together. And are, yeah, are, are you representing hey. two my friends? Are you Mr. representing uh, Team Comic Collector Geek? He's frozen. Oh, you're in frozen. The frozen tundra. Yeah, one sec here. Hi, Papa. Funks. <laughs> oh, there yeah, we go. Cool. All right. Hey. Oh, hey. Hey, it. there it is. <laughs> We're all a member of the Geek How Club. You doing? Yeah, see? Doing well, That's Brian. Great. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. And thanks. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, that was great. I mean, um, the company, the big corporate company that's behind these shirts and all the stuff will be using that as like, it's like a promotional poster that you can <laughs> sit in or the one where you're like this. Oh, it's like, that's, cool. I, I like really it. Cool. Yeah. That's it. The looking up thing. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. See, my God, let, go of his, let go of his mug, Matt. Oh my God, let go of it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got I just got home. I had to like wolf down some food really quick and jump on. <laughs> Good enough. We just started. We just started. So awesome. So yeah. So uh, Kim, you know, it's not my Good Girl comic collection. It's my Good Girl magazine collection, and it's got weird stuff mixed in. So I actually like um. I always put my magazines into these banker boxes. Okay. So I, I basically dumped <laughs> all these banker boxes of magazines onto my floor. So my floor is like covered in it magazines right now. Festooned. It is festooned. And now yes, you're going to like stomp up and down on them and make some good he's girl art he's wine. Gonna crush, like, yeah, he's going to crush grapes yeah. like Lucy. Yeah. Right. If you crush them all together. Yeah. I'm going to make some new stuff. Actually, oh. Brian, um, yes. actually, I found that I had a double of something that's kind of cool in my magazine collection. Kind of cool, TM. <laughs> do, you, do you have this one? Venture. I don't know what is that. It's a Neil Adams cover. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't awesome. have that. What uh, I, is there some significance to? Is there a first appearance of somebody, or is it just a Adams cover? It's just a gratuitous Adams cover. It's a gratuitous Adams cover. I don't know if there's significance to it, but that's it's, its charm. It's, it's gratuitous. Um, so it's a different. It's a different mess than the one I posted on Instagram. The one I posted on Instagram was my when I was sorting out my uh, pre-code horror. Feet. My my feet and my pre-code horror and slightly some good girl was mixed in, and I sorted that out. That's been all sorted. So that's like over there and now organized. I actually know where things are. So. Very good. I'm I'm sort of in that um, spring house cleaning kind of mode. You know what I mean? Like where you kind of go through. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. action I, I one, to, throw that in the garbage. Uh, you know. Uh, I try to clean Superman as I go. One, throw that in the garbage. You know. I've got like five of those. You guys, you know, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going to exactly. cut them up and decoupage the wall with them. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Pod. That's not a great grade <laughs> right there. All right, children, we're going to decoupage. Is that dirty? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Uh, uh, when I was at the show at the um, Frankenstein, uh, Quirty Comics had done decoupage um, mm -hmm. Christmas ornaments. Oh, of, uh, yeah, so where he worked, he worked at a comic oh, shop. Oh, the one where I saw, I, I think I saw that. Like, he had, like, a little thing where he's selling these, like... Um, yeah, like, so he works at a comic shop, and they have, like, a lot of times the issues that are too beat up and rough to sell, and they just, we're going to throw them away. And he's like, so he takes them home and cuts them up and makes Christmas ornaments out of them. Yeah, I can't do that. I, I that, that, that actually hurts me somehow. Like, <laughs> I, you know, when I was, uh, uh, let's see, in high school, we had, we used to hang out and trade comics. And my buddy was like, it's okay to destroy a comic book. And I was like, no, it's not. And he took like an A-team comic. And I'm like, no. And he ripped it in half. And I was just like, <laughs> it just feels so wrong. <laughs> it feels wrong to me. So like, when I see that kind of thing, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like, you know, like sort of like a angel loses its wings or something like that. Or right, something, right. <laughs> something horrible has happened. Um, I just I just gave him back. Uh, there you go. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. So, um, yeah, so uh, uh, we got a bunch of things that are going to be talked about in this video, not just magazines. Steven's been doing some research. He, I have. So oh. last time we had... Um, this meeting of minds uh, on Monday, uh, we were talking about um, Matt Baker. And I came up with the very like delusional uh, belief that Matt Baker was like, um, like a protege of uh, Cayman in such a way that, you know, uh, Cayman was the, the mastermind and little Matt Baker's just, oh, I got to learn how to be just like you. <laughs> so, um, so that's what I thought was happening way back when, when they were working on Fox, because the styles of art between Matt Baker and Cayman were very similar. Yes. So, so then there, were, there was sort of a question about when these two artists kind of started working together, uh, how it all happened. Like, and somebody's been doing some research to find out the truth behind the story. I and I was totally truth. wrong. I was totally I have, wrong. I have the truth of the whole thing. Shall I? I Hi, Bleak. How are you? I mm. wanted to, if you want to make me big, let me just deal with it yeah. now since you've roasted. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I figured um, the, uh, that's the first part of housekeeping. The uh, the question was, of course, because uh, uh, about Cayman and Baker, and uh, uh, Alan was making the, the position that it would seem, it seemed as though Cayman was a considerably a, uh, older uh, person who, uh, was uh, in running at full speed when uh, young uh, Mr. Baker uh, came into the Eisner Iger house. But in fact, what ha the, the truth of it is, Jack Kamen was born in 1920 and Matt Baker was born in 1921. So probably less than a year separates the two men. In 1942, uh, actually 1941, Jack Kamen was working for Western Publishing. Uh, Dell, which which turned into Dell, and uh, and uh, uh, he was doing various other things. And in 1942, he was drafted, and he went into the war for the duration. Um, Mr. Baker, Matt Baker, had a bad heart, had and he could not join. He tried very hard to join the service to serve our country, and it really bothered him that he couldn't. Uh, and he tried and tried, but he just couldn't. His ticker was no, it just was no good. So uh, he had gone to uh, art school and then he had provided to uh, Eisner uh, his portfolio of art that he used to have his entree into Iger, the Iger house, was only one picture. And it was a picture of a gal that he had drawn. And Eisner took one look at that and he was so knocked out, he hired Matt Baker on the spot. And so at that point, and that would have been probably sometime in the in the vicinity uh, of, um, uh, uh, I would say, in the early months of 1944. OK, mm -hmm. and so he then ha had little stuff that he did, but then he like backgrounds. But his first uh, uh, commission or his first artwork that is is specifically attributed to him was in Jumbo Comics number 69. 
And I happen to have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful copy of that book. Um, and I'm thrilled to be able to have this because I'm a big Matt Baker collector. But it is just this, the colors, the green on this cover, uh, I believe it's a Joe Doolin cover. Yeah, it's Joe um, Doolin. Uh, and uh, it, is, it is just an absolutely radiant cover. Uh, it has off-white pages, which, which so a full-color book with off-white pages from Fiction House from 1944. This is this is cover dated November of 1944. Now, I wanted to try to figure out when the book actually was on the stands. It was uh, a monthly. So I scan, went on to a grand collector database or whatever it is at the GCD. And I backed up until one of the books had the actual date of, of issuance or first date of publication on sale date. And that was Jumbo Comics number 67. Okay. It's cover dated September of 1944, but it's on sale date was July 6th of 44. So we have a two month lag uh, verified. So that mm -hmm. means that that uh, Jumbo 69, uh, which is cover dated November, was on sale in September of 1944. So if it was on sale in September of 44, August, in August or thereabouts, Matt Baker produced all of the girls, all of the female forms in the Sheena story. OK, he also and, did Sky Girl as well. And he also did Sky Girl at the same time in that issue. But it the notation is that it was for the girls in the Sheena story. Mm -hmm. That's what it's very specific. It says all of the females that are, are there, not the backgrounds, not all the other stuff, just the females were all done by Matt Baker. So that would have been so he created that in August of 1944. Now. Where is Mr. Kamen? Well, Mr. Kamen is off in the war, and he did not come to Eisner until he returned from the war. The war ended in September, on September 2nd, 1945, aboard the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay, aboard the Missouri, where the instrument of surrender with, with uh, Douglas MacArthur and then the representatives of the Empire of Japan. So then Operation Magic Carpet started, which is then by a, a, a lottery number, not lottery, but a, a point system was set up whereby if you had more points, you were first, uh, further in line, first in line to be able to have transport to come home because there are millions of guys out all over the world and the transport to bring them home, is it was, it was an impossible task and it took months and months and months to get these people home. So when did Cayman get home? I was looking at it and it, there was nothing specific. However, um, he, uh, uh, th what that indicated, uh, his, he married his wife and I'm assuming he married her when he got home. And that was in 1946. So I think that it wasn't, it wasn't until probably the early, early to mid months of 1946 that he then returned and then married married Evelyn. His, name, his wife's name was Evelyn, and they had four kids together. And uh, uh, then he went and went back to work for Iger. So that means that Baker was there plying his trade with the Iger House of Art from at least August of 1944 all the way until mid to late 1946 before Cayman was even there. So the die was cast by Mr. Baker long before Mr. Kamen even was there to make a difference uh, as far as what was going on. Now, the question then is the the, the commingling and what have you as far as how the artwork did and, and who, who did what. Matt Baker was first. And if you look at the, if you go on Comic Book Plus, you can look at Jumbo 69 and you can actually read the whole story and you can see his art and it's pretty well finished. It is His artwork is wonderful. And that was the thing that Eisner mentioned that he had realized the female form so beautifully and proportionally and in lovely fashion. It just sang 
That's why the, all it took was that one illustration that he had done to be hired on the spot. So he had the goods going in, and Eisner was smart enough to see it. And, of course, the rest is history and then St. John and everything else. So I hope that that uh, clarifies and, and makes it a lot easier to, to get a, kind of get a handle on this. This stuff is not easily uh, – you have to be somewhat of a detective to figure these things out. And at some point, Alan, just now, this is, I digress for just a moment. We'll go into the Comics Code Authority, which we, <laughs> Alan and I have been going up and down and around on that one too, uh, which I think will be on his Wednesday show because I asked a question and, and we have been in conversations because you want to talk about no information and not, not knowing nothing, not know how about the code, which was so important and made such a difference uh, that. Those things, that the fabric of that, the, the shields and everything else hiding all the secret information is slowly being revealed. But that's then. I will show this cover yet one more time because it is so beautiful. And I just want to just uh, show you. And this is where Matt Baker started, right here. And this like is where... The, uh, I like the so, monkey pointing out, like, get him. He's, he's, he's telling her where to go. He's like, he's going to go. Yeah. 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 He's showing her where the spirit is. He goes, he says, damn it, right there. Bleak, bleak, bleak. I don't mean that in a pejorative way, bleak. <laughs> uh, the that guy looks like Steppo. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, and the, the back cover is what Judah Man uh, had alluded to when he mm -hmm. was saying that he spent his dollar ninety nine and and uh, Ricky all That's sorts it. of words, who very carefully threw all of our stuff away because it was so grand and so fantastic. He said, "I am not worthy, and I must throw it all away." And he threw it <laughs> all. Away. Uh, or it was an accident. It was a great little other. clip, actually. I wish you know they he would have had that. It was a really good clip. Of it was movie. really good. It was really good. And the, the world will never know. Yeah. Says, hey, you kick, like, you kick sand in my face, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, but that is the, the story on, on Matt Baker and Jack Kamen uh, proving that Mr. Baker was, uh, was there and was not that much of a difference in age whatsoever. Uh, and so that the, the commingling of them and the talent that they brought to the uh, Iger Eisner Eisner mm -hmm. Iger House of Art, which was so good, uh, and from that there. Now, I, I while I still have you, I wanted oh, to show. Okay, I'll make you big again. I wanted to show just one other thing. This is this isn't really necessarily on topic, but uh, Nathan Zerdy is a is a good girl artist and is a very very good good girl artist and very. Uh, very sexiful, and some more sexiful, sexiful? than others. Is that a word? Sexiful, yeah. That's <laughs> a good one. It's a uh, word now. I, uh, uh, Brian, <laughs> I, I create words as I go because okay. it makes it okay. so much easier. I don't have to think of words. I just make them up as I go. Mm -hmm. I'm glad right, you're, going along. I'm sure glad you're going along. I'm glad you're <laughs> going on. along with me on that. Uh, I, oh, that's huge, actually. I, yeah, I 11 by 17? What? 11 by 17? 11 by 17, I think it is. It might even be 11 and a half by 18. Wow. But the thing is that Nathan Zerdy, Dirty Zerdy, Dirty Zerdy, Dirty Zerdy, Zerdy. Uh, he, um, he uh, uh, signed this poster uh, by, by hand. And he, uh, I thought I was getting another one like my, my Jetsons cover. But actually, in, in fact, what it was was a poster, and this is of Wilma and Betty. I didn't realize oh, it was nice. so big. And he signs cool. uh, right down here is where he signs it. So you can't really see it too well. But but isn't that a wonderful image? It sort of has yeah, that. Um, what's the, what's the, is it, was it the beach one where, um, you know, the girl you know, gets her, you know, the the dog bites her. Oh, the copper tone. The copper, copper tone. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, 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 it alludes to that because Dino thinks that Wilma has too many clothes on. Mm. And, Betty, and right. Betty has her and, and Betty has her trademark uh, firmly uh, uh, <laughs> latched onto the back of Dino's head. Any number. And the little green one is looking up uh, Wilma's uh, uh, trademark. 
and it's all of the all of the, all of the features and things uh, that you really need to have. All of the classic elements of of classic art are here, and for mm -hmm. future generations, I wanted to make sure that this was available as a reference. Betty, I think, is uh, I think a little bit bustier than Wilma, uh, mm -hmm. God lover. Uh, and uh, but there you go. So here's a weird question. This is like I want to ask the chat this. I want to ask you guys this. Which do you guys prefer, Wilma or Betty? Mm. See, I was always a Betty guy. I always liked Betty. I I have to confess, I uh, I I kind of go back and forth between Team Wilma and Team Betty, but I tend to be with Team Betty. Like with okay. Ginger and Marianne, I I I like them both, but I'm on on Team Marianne. You know, I, I always thought Betty was cuter in the cartoon, but uh, I married a redhead, and uh, the, that drawing right there, I, I don't know. Uh, now, I'm let's not have, don't, her, right? bring, don't bring politics into this, Brian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we try to, we avoid uh, politics I as much. I say there's a little bit of uh, uh, phallic innuendo going on in that picture, too. Uh, there's, there's well, some stuff you, going now, on there. I, was try, I was trying to keep it out of the gutter, Brian. Now you look, Brian, look Brian, what Brian's you made do. Look <laughs> what you picks her up. I mean, <laughs> it's in the you, gutter already. <laughs> you were just talking about the artistic merits of this beautiful piece of art. And Brian Look has at the to, way like, he blended the colors and the... <laughs> yes, the moresque of colors on the... Uh, uh, but anyway, there you go. Here we go. And, and Betty has a little tat on her shoulder. Uh, and uh, she is, uh, she is got so a. So, what is Betty's tattoo? Can you make it out? It says, uh, "What is it?" It's a crest, and it says, "Oh my goodness, there is writing." What does it say? <laughs> this is where we find out there's some hidden meaning. Uh, it says Stepo. It says <laughs> if you're reading this. Steve Gentner is awesome. Is there this you like go. Code Actually, where across like some right above her breasts, it says bad girl. Oh, ah, man. there you go. There you go. Oh, you know why? It's probably, I think it's um the poster for Naughty and Nice. I think it uh, is Naughty and okay. Nice with the Betty, yeah, Betty and sense. Wilma homage. Homage. Because there's a lot of ho going on here. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. So anyway, <laughs> I hope you like that. That's very nice. Very nice. I, will now, I, I, I relinquish the field to Mr. Allen, and okay. I will I will just go like this. <laughs> yeah. We should have like little ads running at the bottom. You can buy, you can have this very shirt in your own collection for only one million dollars. I don't know how much these shirts go for. They go for a long. million dollars. That's, that's million not dollars, much. you said. That's not that much money. I do so. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, damn. so yeah. So, um, do you want to show some books, uh, Big B, or do you want me to show? Some I haven't books? really picked up anything new to show. Right. So, I mean, I'm gonna show some on, Alan. Feel free. I'll, I'll just I'll be the peanut guess. gallery. Let your guest relax just a, a minute. Okay, you well, you, you press him into service. He comes home from working all day. All <laughs> you're doing is fiddling around with funny books all day, showing mm -hmm. your feet. And I, I I begin to worry about you. Showing your feet, you know, maybe are you gonna start an OnlyFans page? You're your jealous feet? of my feet. I don't know. I'm... <laughs> my my wife sent socks to him and he says that that's fine. I, never I, don't, wear wear, socks. I don't I don't wear socks. My feet uh, are oh, like okay. blue, like a bluish tone. <laughs> <laughs> Blue feet, <laughs> which which indicates a certain circulation problem, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up in your frozen, I'll, in your frozen I'll carrot in your house. Point, but, um, He's okay, a Smurf. So I'm, secret. I'm show He's, some Smurf. Random... He's Alan Smurf. I'm Alan Smurf. Um, I'm going to show some random magazines. Okay, so Be random. Guys... random magazines. Random. Drum roll, please. Random, random, random. Okay, so the first random magazine is this one. Food Boom. number eleven. Who's the first in the chat that can say what foom means? It's something at Marvel, right? It's like the offices at Marvel, something like it's, that. Uh, it's, uh, we'll see if the chat gets it. Anyone know what foom means? What does foom mean? It's I'll give them, so there, there, there's, there's a little delay. So, all right. I'm going to say the first one. The first one is Friends. Friends yep, of Kelly Old Marvel. Yep. Friends of Old Marvel. I knew Marvel. it was something Marvel. I knew the M was Marvel. That's all I yep. knew. 
So friends of Good old job, Joe, Callie. Callie, Callie wins the prize, which is absolutely mm. nothing. Um, the no prize. So, <laughs> Callie wins the no prize. The no prize. Oh, that's no actually prize. another thing that they had, right? The no prize, right? Yeah. Um, I actually, there's something key about this book. I think it's like a first um, appearance, like a prototype, something. Uh, Alan, could you make could you make me big for just a second, please? Sure, sure, okay. Oh, you got a no? He's you do have a. I think I know what you're going to show. I have an actual, honest to god, no prize. Oh wow! Yeah, I need that better in like the and I have and... the early, and this is one of the early ones. There's a whole bunch of stuff about the the no prizes as far as how you can tell the green on the on the the Hulk looking green, um, and the the return address. I mean that the Marvel address on the where they were to begin with, and all that stuff. And all this is is there's a larger envelope, which is to Barry Feldman. Uh, mm -hmm. from uh, Bellevue, uh, New York, uh, that was sent to him. And I, I wonder if it was Flo Zigfield, if, if you remember Flo or Steinberg or whoever it was, was the, the his her girl Friday in the bullpen. <laughs> my wife my wife must know your wife. Yeah. I think um, we all have the same wife. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that's interesting. Uh, so, but, uh, and, and then so all they do, they had a, a slightly smaller envelope that fit into the larger envelope. And uh, and so uh, that was your no prize. But uh, uh, if you go on, on eBay episodically, these they things do these things do I come up. Yeah. And on the yeah. back, on the back of it in the same envelope, I have the the entire pack for the Mary Marvel Marching Society to a serviceman in the Navy who uh, added actually sent to his ship in San Diego before they deployed to Vietnam. And it lived in his footlocker. It's got all the stuff, the pin and all the other stuff is in here. These are my two. It's the two. But but that is what an, a no prize actually looks like. I'm yeah. sorry, Alan. I didn't mean to play through, but I had it right here. Uh, I've seen uh, I've seen people with shirts that say it, that have that picture of the thing. No and it prize. says uh, the yeah. MMS wants you. I like, oh, here comes, I like the, one with the Hulk is the sweatshirt. Here comes the Hulk. And then the back, it's him walking away mm -hmm. going. There goes there the goes. Hulk. The Hulk. I'd <laughs> love to have one of those. I would that love to have one of those. Those are classic. I bet they still make them. You can find them somewhere. Christmas yeah. present for Steppo. Got to find one. Okay, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to try to get Alan. I'm going to have to try to get Alan the, the Warren guitar. Uh, the oh, Vampirella yes. guitar. I, I definitely need that. I know yeah. you do. And I, I'm going to try and get I'm going to try and get you one. Okay, okay. Callie was asking if you have Doom Dollars, Steppo. I do not have Doom, Doom dollars, dollars, but I have the miniature books, too. I have the little, tiny, little marble books like they were I like. I had one or two of those as a kid, actually. I, I actually had those from the bubblegum machines. But Are um, they Latvarian yeah. books? I mean, Callie, are they <laughs> Lat Latvarian latka? I mean, what are they, you know? This sweatshirt is so nice. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is an uh, 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 unsolicited promotional uh, plug. Um, sometimes when you get sweatshirts, they're, they're okay. They're this so one is, this is a Gildan uh, is the company, which is a very good company. Mm -hmm. uh, the, Only the, the, it's, it's actually, it's a very, it's a, a it's a lightweight uh, one. It has, uh, and it, it is very, very well made. And the graphics here, the graphics put on here are very, very, very well done. So the factors that are actually producing uh, uh, Alan's swag that you should get to show their show the colors mm -hmm. is uh, it's really good stuff. I have I to mean, say, those little very kids, they're, they're good with their hands. I mean, they're really good. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and, sent, and it came from Detroit. It came from Detroit, Michigan. So oh, yeah. here comes this bag, and it says Detroit, Michigan. Stephen and Susan Gettner. And I'm saying, what did Susan order? Well, she would have told me, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, then I, I start to, and then all of a sudden I go, oh my gosh, it's from Alan. And then I mm -hmm. think, and Brian, you got yours the same day as I got mine, right? Yeah, yeah I did, really? yeah. It's great. Yeah. Thank it you. Is, this is a very nice, I would say lightweight, breathable t-shirt. Very nice. So Yeah, yeah. yeah it's I good like stuff. It. It's very good stuff. So that's all. All right, okay. So Promotion and Am I allowed to show books again? No. <laughs> Go I'll, I'll expect my sweatshirt in the mail soon. 
Okay, well, well here, that's how it goes. Oh, that's how it goes. It keeps, and then it's and like, Stefan oh, will I, expect I expect his t-shirt in the mail soon. Then it's like the next thing. It's like, oh, then it's like, oh, I expect my watch. And then the, the oh, the car. And it's like, it keeps that's on right. Then the title of the house and, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so these were other things that were in the same box. As, oh, cool. This is from uh, Sweden. What is, what is the actual title? What is it? It's Cal. No, I know, but what does it translate to? It translates to Cal. Cal blood. Cal blood. I think it's something blood, like uh, something blood. Actually, you know what's funny? I showed this book like way back when, after I got back from Sweden, and uh, the person, like one of the Swedish people that watches my channel, uh, actually translated what it said, but I. I forgot what it was. It was something like um, something blood. Cold blooded. Ten cold blooded. Cold blooded. Yeah, cold blooded. That's what it is. That makes there sense. There you go. That's what I'm here for. 1993 <laughs> number one. 1993 yeah. number one. And this was 65 kroner. So this was about uh, one kroner. Like it's worth about five. Uh, no, no, sorry, other way around. Um, like there's like about ten kroners to the dollar. So about six okay. bucks. So okay, and then I thought this one was cool. Oh, that's this is another cool. one of these Swedish ones. Cool. I got that's this before I actually got the actually. US version. Oh, yeah, it's a big cool. key, but it's a, it's obviously a reprint, but it came out later too. Um, yeah, but like those those Spanish ones are are huge right now. Like they that's not Spanish, but yeah, the oh, yeah. Spanish ones are the ones where she lives, and then that she kept on. They had a whole bunch of stories. Well, it's a different completely story. Completely out of continuity. Yeah. Yeah, these ones are these ones are not the like the. Spanish that was a ones. big push they, by they, Comic Tom. Was the one who really went gaga over that. Yeah, actually, I had an opportunity to pick those Spanish ones up really cheaply, but I was like, ah. <laughs> ah, who wants those things? Ah. They're never going to amount to. Ah well. <laughs> and then I got this one. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. I'm always, I'm always amazed that people can put like characters like Wonder Woman on a, a magazine. Yeah, and... well, this one's devoted to all female characters. Yeah, but I mean, they're copyrighted characters. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all the other people. ones, all the other ones are not, but Wonder Woman yeah. is. The rest of them are public domain, but she is definitely not. I don't know how they got away with it either, actually. But um, yeah, so we got. Do you guys actually know all these girls? I know there's Phantom Lady, Wonder Woman, Lady Luck, Cave Woman. I forgot her name. Um, is it is Phantom Lady's DC? Isn't she now, or is she not? Yeah, Phantom yes, Lady's DC, the but they changed the characters. Her look. All went, yeah. yeah. But it's like a green and yellow costume that she wears. That's correct. The this first the incarnation of the police comics, not the Fox version. Yeah. And Fox is defunct. So that's Do the I have version. Femme Force? Yes, I do. Okay. You know, so this was all in the same box. Okay. These are like all my random books that are in the same box. Is some of the, and then we got Star Femme. Star Femmes. I forgot who's the first appearance. There's actually a first appearance in this. I forgot who, though. What so character? What, what, what number is it? Number two. Uh, this is Star Femme. is number two. You can look it up. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. I forgot who it is. It's like one of those female characters. It's kind of a cool cover. Who's the cover artist? I see the name. I can't make out the signature. Uh, it's um, Gulis, Gul Gulasi, 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 Paul Gulasi, Paul Gulasi. Yep. Yes, 1980. Mm, so, well. That's kind of a cool cover. I like the spacecraft. That's um, really cool. So you, the only way you can look it up, Brian, would be on Comic Vine because it won't be on Key Collector Comics. Yeah. It's 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 an obscure character, and on Comic Vine they actually say who it is, but I forget. Okay, and then we got uh, an art album cool. uh, from uh, Simon Beasley. That's cool. Yeah, it's like it's got a whole bunch of good girl art. Yeah, I like there. the I like her face. I, I mean, I like the whole layout. That's really cool. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm a big fan of Simon Beasley actually. Um, so yeah, I kind of was picking up some of his stuff, and then we got some David Sim, uh, David Stevens, David Stevens. 
It's Dave. Oh, Steven. nice. Dave, Dave. David. Oh, my Always God. Dave. Dave. Just oh, my God. Dave. Dave. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't mind me. Um, no, I got I got David Sims in my mind. And then I. Uh, That's all right. Yeah. So we got Dave Stevens. I just have to say, it, it. of course, he died so young uh, from cancer, mm -hmm. squalus cell, I think, or whatever it was that took him. Oh, so um, those are minor characters in Star Fems number two? What? You think they're minor characters in Star Fems number a, two? It's a minor character, but it's one that's from Fem Force. Uh, it says it's the first appearance of Jabba the Hutt, Han Solo, Obi Wan Kenobi, and Chewbacca, is what it says. Well, the, they really? are, they're, real, they're feminine, aren't they? Really? What I'm getting on here from something. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see. Here, should maybe I open I'm, it up? Yeah. Maybe it's confusing Star Wars number two with Star Fems number two. That's, I, I think, is what you just I think it is. Like yeah. So I know Star yeah, Wars. That must be it. It's confusing it. Star Wars with Star Fems. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Never mind. That didn't make sense. I was thinking that. Go <laughs> about your right. business. I think it was. Okay, wait. I got to find out who I Mista of the Moon? Mr. No, yeah, it's Mr. Of Planet Comics. Very okay. nice. There we go, Mr. There we go. There we go. I, I was like, I wait a minute. I, I think it's somebody else, though. Actually, got some really great good girl art in this. Look at this. It is first nice. appearance of the. Oh, that's issue number one. Is first appearance of the Commissar. Let's no, see. it's not the Commissar. Uh, it's some girl. I gotta find it. And then here's Mr. The Moon. Mr. The Moon. I gotta find it. I, I, I actually really great stuff in here. <laughs> it's like really, it's got some really great uh, bondage stuff going on. Look at this. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Let's wait one sec here. I'm gonna flip through. Uh -huh. Okay, and then it's got some star fems. I think it might be actually Fem Force that actually makes their first appearance in this. Something like that. I got to find out. One sec here. I'm flipping through to try to find out. It's on. It's on Comic Vine. If you go on Comic Vine, and there's Black Blaze. Never to be forgotten. Never like you know. These are all she like has sort of a she has sort of a of a lady luck kind of thing going on with yeah the, a little uh, bit a little bit of lady luck a little bit like um, lady rawhide if you're familiar with that character I am I oh. thought Lindsner's Lindsner's treatment of her is very good yeah okay wait I'm trying to uh, I can't find whatever it is your whatever it is maybe it was Stormy Tempest maybe it was. There's Stormy Tempest. I think it is. I think that's the character. So Stormy, Stormy Tempest. That's a minor character. <laughs> that is a minor character, but part of the I, Fem I've Force. Never even, I've never even heard of Stormy Tempest. Okay, so this is the thing. Like, I was like, I, I go down these like rabbit holes of, uh, of, of, you know, collecting certain things. Like, and I was trying to like get all the Fem Force characters. Stormy so Tempest. No, oh, oh, wait. <laughs> Yeah. So you, well, know. you think of Stormy, you always think of something else in current. Uh, uh, yeah, part. Stormy Daniels. Yeah. 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 But oh, okay, so that's so that's that. Okay. Here, Alan, can I show some? No. Okay. <laughs> well, give me. I'll, I'm just gonna show two more, and then yes. No. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just Denied. Okay. And then we got some nat national lampoon. Can you recognize the, the Corbin? Artist? Richard Corbin? No. 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 Looks it's like Frank Corbin. Fizzetta. Frank Fazetta. Yes, yes, it is. The girl looks Corbin-y. No, she looks she more. Does, she does indeed, but that she has that kind of simian look where he, he the face is kind of munged. And uh, uh, Alan, what is the name of the mentor for Frazetta that was doing weird tales? Oh, uh, you 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 know it. I don't know it. It's the guy that did the Cauldron one. I don't know. Right. It. John is it Saint John or whatever his name is. Yeah, something like that. I, you yeah. you know it. You're the one that looked it up. I don't remember that. I don't oh, remember. All right, gee, I took a nasty turn. <laughs> Please. Wow. I don't remember his name. I don't. I I, I I'm terrible with names. But don't yeah, here's friend. another Fazetta oh, one. Jeez. <laughs> this is another Fazetta. So these two actually are the ones that people chase after for National Lampoon. So. But you were after that one because it said it. The it says uh. It's extraterrestrials on it. Does it? Oh yeah, it does actually. 
That's really funny. <laughs> okay, so now I'll make you guys think again. I'll, I'll I'll go back to you guys one sec here. Brian, did you have magazine some magazines you wished to show? I don't want to play through on you. Um, um, no, not Black Cauldron. It was a it was a weird tales uh, cover. I'll I'll, I'll cover. go get it. Oh, now why are you leaving? When I make I'm you not going it. anywhere. I'm right now here. Away and it's like, well, here, I got some magazines to show. Okay. Thankfully, there we, we go. got Brian to you know pick up the slack. <laughs> so we got this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be showing like other ones related to that. Marvel preview number four, That's which appears cool. in Star Lord. This is uh, it presents well, but the cover is completely detached. <laughs> so is that this room that you're in, Brian? Is this like your semi comic room? Because I know you have your garage, which has this a lot is my of stuff. this is my office, and then then I have my other comic room. Yeah, so um, okay. I was yeah. curious about that. Yeah, so I I have just Travis came over the other day. He's like, oh my lord, a lot of books have migrated from the comic room to the office. <laughs> <laughs> so here's this one. Oh, that's a nice one, Legion of Monsters. Yeah, Marvel preview. Uh, it's the first meeting of uh, Blade and Morbius. Oh wow. Yeah, and that's uh, what number eight Marvel preview number eight. Very nice. And let's see, we've got Marvel preview number two. Oh, which cool! Is the I think first, that's an early Punisher. It's the first origin of the Punisher. Yeah, I remember. I knew, I remember that being a key. I just yeah, what it was yeah. And also, the first appearance of Dominic Fortune. Oh, nice. Yeah. And one more magazine, kind of a magazine. There we go. Oh, Big size wow. Thing. And is nice. that a green label because it's missing like the mask? Missing the mask, but that is it. So it's a 9 0. Um, it's so hard to find the complete versions of those. Yeah, Steppo has a few. <laughs> I, I, have, I have the one with the mask actually. <laughs> I picked this one up uh, last. Summer for hi epoch. I shouted out your channel today, epoch. Just so you know. So there you go. Those are some magazines. I was just I was just uh, filling the dead air while Steppo found what he needed to find. Okay, you are you ready, Steppo? I was born ready. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Since since okay, if you wanted to enlarge me, I can't make you any larger. It would be I unsafe. <laughs> Since Brian showed that one, I thought I'd show this one. Okay. There you go. For Psylocke. For Fetsy um, Braddock. Yeah. This to find a nine eight of the of these is ridiculous. So is that a nine eight? Uh, what is it? I can't see the grade. It is a nine eight. Nine oh, point wow. eight. Nice. And the pages are off white to white, which is also really hard. I I uh it, to find them is just uh, really, really tough. Um, so there's that. And here is the weird tales that we were talking about, the cauldron. Yeah, that's a cool and one. And the artist, and the artist that is this is like St. John or something is his name. Very, very famous. Besides just doing like a few weird tales, he was an uh, illustrator of, of great renown and repute. And both Frank Frazetta and some other guy, one other fellow, and I can't remember who, but yeah, this was, who was two major artists. Two major artists were totally in the thrall of this particular artist. And if you look at the physical, the, the musculature and the layout of this, you can see where Frazetta got, where he basically em emulated the guy. So then another magazine I have is the first Rocket Raccoon. I was going to show that. That was the, my book that I was going to show. It was but, your book. Yeah, it was. Yeah. This was just <laughs> this was just a survivor. Uh, when I offed my whole collection, the magazines and my uh, the treasury editions and all that stuff were, and the Doc Savages and what have you were all in one box, uh, mm -hmm. the bottom of my book box from my college books because I always thought I spent so damn much money on these college books. I thought I would be able to use them eventually, and they were absolutely worthless. And uh, no one wanted them, and I finally just gave you know gave them away. Maybe yes, maybe it was Boris Fileo. For who? No, 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 no. The the guy that was influenced by um, the Saint John guy. Ah, uh, no, I don't believe it was Vallejo. 
I, I don't remember. Because they're I'm, in the same I, time period, aren't they? The yeah, I think they are. But I, I apologize for, for not giving you the, the complete dope on it. Mm. I guess I'm the complete dope. <laughs> um, but no, that, that, no, I, no, I really no, like no. that Santana one. Uh, actually, I had it. I was going to show it as well. Um, it's a, it's such a I, I, I'm a big fan of Rocket Raccoon. I always thought he was cool. Oh, I thought he was very. I think he's really uh, no, cool. not Olivia. Olivia is more modern, Matt. Um, the uh, uh, Mr. Matt, uh, would you please who asked who is the cover artist for Weird Tales, Volume Twenty Eight, Number Three, Volume Twenty Eight, yes, Number Three, October Nineteen Thirty Six. So Weird Tales, show. October. 36. Okay, that's what you search. Volume 20, yeah, October 1936, volume 28, number three. Yeah, I yeah, I thought so. I thought that he was a bit later than Frank Fazetta. I well. agree. I yeah. agree. Uh, but they had similar art styles in a way. Uh Leo. here's a here's another magazine. It's in a magazine holder. It's it is a magazine, but it's it's a tiny magazine. Oh yes. That's really cute. And this is uh, Betty Page. Uh, and it is the highest graded copy of this. this J. Oh, Allen so J. J. Allen St. John on that. J. Oh, Allen St. John. Thank oh, wow. you. That's well, it. J. J. That. Allen St. John. J. Allen St. John. You're abs Thank you, Matt. Okay, so J. Allen St. John. Allen Saint John. There you go. That's who. That's who the. That was who was. But then, the, who did he influence? Is the question next? That's the next question. So, first question: Who was? And it? then the, the other is question, just, uh, Frank Frazetta, and what other artists were influenced by Saint John? Alan Saint uh, J. Allen Saint John. Yeah. Okay, we all have to remember that. I'm going to test us all in three months' time. Will we remember this? I'll test you, Alan, because that way, then I know you won't know. Yeah, I probably will forget. <laughs> I, have, I have a few more and then I will I, I will then relinquish to you again and again in keeping with my massive magazines here's another magazine Roy Crendel? Uh, Crinkle I think Crinkle. it is Crinkle thanks Crinkle. Wayne I think it was I think it was Crinkle I really I like that pepper right. by the way I like that mm -hmm. pepper I like the pepper this is from uh, this is early this is October of 1943 hmm and that was that one of those little gag books. Um, yes, it is. Hmm. And I looked at the insides, and do you know what the best part of it? The cover. The cover. <laughs> the interior is like. Yeah. Uh, but I really, I, it just, you know, and the thing was, this really wasn't as cheap as it should have been. It was. I bought it from. Someplace. <laughs> so I got this one. I have these sort of in, uh, in... Uh, something Baker Joseph uh, jo Josephine Baker is the banana dance Josephine it... Baker Josephine Baker that's what I said I just corrected myself Josephine I see. Baker I see yes. um, uh, here is another one uh, that I got oh and go. Uh oh, what happened? Are you still there? I'm still here. Well, oh, I think Stephen is frozen. He's like, he's going to keep on showing it to us until we get tired of that one book. It's Mr. Robot Stephen. So, um, okay, I'm going to take over. <laughs> I'll show some All stuff. Right. Well, well, we get Stephen back. He, he keeps on crashing the internet. He like did something on um, Bleaker's he channel. Broke the internet. And he broke the internet there. And now he's breaking the internet on my channel. It's so for that, uh, the only more person I can see that was no somebody else found out. It, somebody else found out. It was uh, Crankle. Crankle. Okay. Oh, we got another guest. Is that oh Stephen coming back in a different form? Okay, remove from stage. Does that work? Yeah, I, I, I appear to I, I appear to be here here. here. <laughs> that was your internet crashed. You you're bad with the internet there, Stephen. I need to move us around. I'm bad. I'm bad. 
<laughs> Can you move step over <laughs> the middle again? I don't know. Give Maybe us balance. Just... Oh, there, there we you go. go. There you go. Wow, it's like thank like you. Hmm. I'm the I'm the the the, the lard in the middle of the cake, I guess. Do you the have daughter, Dracula's daughter? Yes, I do. I do. Uh, does Stephen? I do not. I don't have a whole lot of Lilith. Yeah, I I have like I have, I I found all my like key magazine books. So yeah. Well, I just want to show this one again before the thing all crashes again. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting what will, what will resonate with 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 people on the on, on Instagram and what doesn't. I put this one up because I think it's just a really fun. It's cute, uh, mm -hmm. and this is during the war, and you see the V on her hat, that the wacky '40s hat, and like V for victory, V on everything, and uh, this thing went it went crazy. I think it was like 150 you know, oh, likes really? on it. Yeah, it just it just took off. Uh, but uh, it is cute. But uh, anyway, but that is from uh, this is actually Private Bill number five from 1944. So go ahead, Alan, take over. All right, I'll take over. Um, and Brian, do you have stuff as well to show? I do have a thing to show. Do you want to show it first? Oh, no, the magazine, the magazine. D don't show the other. <laughs> don't show anything. I have a, I have a magazine to show. Okay, show your magazine. Only. Only your magazine. I, I remember that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, so got, that's a really cool one. My first visit to go see Mr. Steppo. Uh, I mm -hmm. picked this up. Well, actually, he gifted it to me very graciously, along with a uh, original print. Steppo, do you want to tell the story about this? Uh, I uh, uh, Go ahead and show it. Uh, uh, if you could show okay. the poster. Uh, uh, oh, Alex I, I can show it. Alex Schomburg was the one who created that cover uh, and the artwork, uh, and that was specific to the All American Comic Book Convention uh, and uh, the the Herald Sisters uh, from Old Weird Herald's uh, bookstore, and uh, they knew where he was. Everyone thought he was dead, and this was what started the uh, the guys that wrote the book on Chroma about uh, Alex Schomburg art. Uh, basically made the the uh, pilgrimage from California to come meet Alex. And when people realized that he was still alive, why then the interest started right about that time. And that's when he started. All of his work was then sort of rediscovered again. And the, and the popularity, especially of his propaganda covers. And then he started to do the paintings. They call them recreations, but they're they're actually original. They're, they're paintings. It's really good. You joke, man. <laughs> and then he gave me this as well. That's a good one. That's a nice, clean joke. Thank yes. you. He also gave me this. That's really cool. I mean, the original art. Insanely artwork. cool, considering it is. Well, each, one, each one is an original, Alan. They, right. they, they, were, they were, each one was an original print uh, on heavy cardboard. And was each one was numbered and signed by Alex. Wow, that's very, very cool. It's a, a silkscreen, right? Silkscreen, sir, yes. Yep. Oh, wow. So, so, yeah, so Steppo has made me cry on many occasions when I go to his house. <laughs> yeah. He does that without me even having to go to his house. It's really weird. Makes you cry? <laughs> you know, it, it's... Alan's tears. <laughs> well, Alan's tears. I mean, and, and of course, but Alan's tears are wonderful, especially when they drench the books that I I yanked out of his <laughs> classic like, hands into my like own. Ninety ah. percent of Stephen's collection has Alan tears on them. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> so wonderful! It just I walk in and I smile. They have <laughs> traces of Alan's uh, shopping cart on them, also. <laughs> so, by the way, um, Brian, when do you have to go to your show? I uh, mine is eight o'clock Pacific, so I've got oh, like oh, three hours. Yeah, plenty of time. Oh yeah. my goodness! So Brian, I I scheduled this show early because I thought your show was eight o'clock my time. I was trying to leave. No, early. I said eight o'clock my time. Yeah. Well, it's I'm fine. sorry, it's buddy. Glad we're all together. This is fun. I, oh, okay. I it's nice to not feel the crunch, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the consideration given to to the creators, and mm -hmm. I I think it's uh, I'm just glad to be a guest amongst all these titans here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> You're the Titan, you want, buddy. If you guys want to see some more uh, 
Alan sure. Brandon books. Okay. Yes, yeah, Alan Brandon books. Let's see some more. Okay. okay, so this is the land that time forgot. Beautiful. Oh, that's cool. That's really that's colorful. Cool. Yeah, it's number one Marvel me- movie premiere, Land of Land of Time Forgot. I thought it's just a, it's a cool cover. I don't know why I bought this. I don't know where I got this. Well, it's great I, colors on it, and the frail is. It looks like it's, yeah, it's a really cool got cover. The, Conan's Who's got the, the artist. Out. I have no idea who did the art. Actually, it's uh, Cardi. Oh, Nick okay. Cardi. Cool. Yeah, that's a that's a real departure from his usual style, isn't it? It says Cardi on it. I, I would imagine it's Nick Cardi. Who I can't else? believe there are more of them. Yeah. So that's I don't know. I thought that was cool. And that's really cool. Then we got some Wally Wood. Lunar Tunes. Lunar Tunes. That reminds me of... Uh, of uh, uh, it's like Calvin. a Storenko vibe. I, I like with, when Calvin yeah. is, is Spaceman Spiff and uh, on those Sunday strips where he's taking on the dinosaurs and all that stuff and it's the teacher giving him a hard time at school. You know, I just mm-hmm. I love that Calvin and Hobbes stuff. Yeah, actually, it has a bit of that feel to it. Um, what's actually really cool about this book, It's it's got nudity inside, but it only shows top. It never shows bottom nudity. But whenever they like they show her and she's actually completely nude, they always have something that kind of censors it. It's almost like it's a bit of a thing that they do all the way through. It's really, really funny. Yeah, it's <laughs> like it's it's a little trope that they put in. It's quite, quite funny that way. Uh, so this is Lunar Tunes, which is... I gotta so beg Becker, for Beckerman way. has a trivia question for Steppo. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. I have a stumper trivia question for Steppo. The first comic convention has the most accept. Wait, most accept was 64. But what comic book letters page is was responsible for the organizers meeting? Hmm. Well, I would be make you know, of course, Metropolis Mailbag, um, uh, Flash Grams. Um, I honestly don't know, Mr. Beckerman. I am stumped. And he's saying it is the 1964 New York Convention. 1964. I, mm-hmm. I, uh, you've, you, you, you got me on that one. I do not know. All right. I, 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 what is the answer, <laughs> sir? That was the answer. The 1960s. No, that's what? the convention. What what was what, the what mystery? In, he said mystery in space was the letter page. I'll oh, be darned. Mystery page. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you. That's what a great piece of trivia that is. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to show some other random books. Well. Okay. Random. <laughs> okay. So we got some uh, Dean Yagel. Scriblins. And her Scriblins. name is Mandy. And oh, that's the one like, that you guys are showing the cover of, yeah. So that one was the first appearance of Mandy, from what I can tell. Uh, I, I was kind of trying to find it, and then I, I picked up the other books. These are all, like, pin-up kind of style books. So there's number two and number three. I kind of like Mandy. I like the way he draws. I, I don't can't understand why. Yeah. She's really cute. So I have, a, I have a question for you, Alan. Do you have any, do you have the first appearances? or So she's got many different first appearances of things, like... First Betty Page in Playboy. Do you have her first Betty? Any of the first Betty Page in certain things? Um. So I have the first Betty Page comic. Okay. Uh, actually, it's in the magazines that I was pulling out. Strangely enough. Um, okay. So um, there's actually a Betty Page that appeared first in um, Heavy Metal magazine. That was her first comic book appearance. Her first comic book appearance, right? Okay. Yeah, and then I actually have her first comic comic first appearance, which is actually a comic book. Uh, mm-hmm. So I have a bunch of I have and I have a bunch of early Betty Page stuff. So yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. Random so I, thing. We're, I was talking in a message group the other night, and uh, somebody was saying they were talking about how insanely expensive that stuff is. So. Oh yeah, uh, the one actually, the strangely, strangely, the one where it's um, in uh, heavy metal is not an expensive book. You can pick it up for like ten bucks. Yeah, these were like uh, older magazines, not not comics. Yeah, the magazine, the magazine pinups with Betty Page um, are very expensive. Like 
they, because yeah, they'll yeah. It depends on which ones though. There's a lot of the, she appeared in a lot of magazines and comics, by the way. Uh, yeah, as pinup. Um, so this one is like R B C C something comic book convention. Uh, Rocket Blast comic collector. Sorry, Rocket Blast comic collector ninety two. It's just a weird. Looks like kind of like Red Skull. It definitely looks like Red Skull. Yeah. Kind of some weird. My uh, friend Falco told me about that book, so I picked it up. And this one, I got, I, there's like a whole bunch of creative people that were involved with this one. This is Web of Horror, number one. And is that the like, one you and I were watching at a yeah, claim sale that, and they yeah, had that on the wall? Yeah, it. That's yeah, the one? Okay. Up, yeah, and then we looked it up afterwards and it was like a whole bunch of famous people were involved. Like, Yeah, um, yeah, we were like going over, you know. You're like, well, how much is that magazine? I want to know what that magazine's going for. <laughs> yeah, it's like Jones cover and like a whole bunch of famous people were involved with it, though. I was like, oh, how did this? <laughs> like, I never even heard of this thing. Um, yeah. Web of Horror. So, yeah, so I thought that was cool. And then this one, do you guys know? I, okay, this one's a trivia for everyone that's watching. See how well you guys know this one. This is Savage uh, Sword of Conan, number one. Do you know what the key significance of this is? Say again. The Savage, Savage Sword, Sword of Conan, number one. Conan. Yep, number one. What's the key significance? First Red Sonia. No. Nope. Close. It's something to do with Red Sonia. Lay it on us. Okay, if you can sort of look at her closely, she's wearing her uh, trademark chainmail bikini. Chainmail bikini. It's the first appearance of the chainmail bikini. Well, we're we're uh, we're twins on a couple now. That's one of them. I have that one, and I had the uh, femme fa fantastique. Both of those I had. I was going to show too. Well, now you can't. <laughs> I'm, just <kidding. laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, and um, I think I'm trying to remember, but okay, this is Tiny Toon Adventures. I think this is the first appearance of Babs, the girl right there, the little bunny. Uh, do I have yeah, the first appearance funny. of Archie? No, I do not have the first appearance of Archie. But I'd be willing to accept if anyone wants to send that to me. Yeah, see? Southern comic... Uh, yes. Yes, it's the first Gmail Red Sonia. Yes. And do you guys recognize this artist? Bruce Tim. Bruce Tim. Yeah. And which character is it? Big Barda. Barda. Big Barda, yeah. Isn't that great? Very. It's awesome. So, so yeah, so okay, so those are a few more from me. I'll let you guys show some stuff here. Brian, why don't you go? I uh no. <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> All right, I'll go. I'll go then. Okay, okay, you can go. Uh so you can see that my my comic book collection, my magazine collection was really disorganized, right? Like just all over the place. Uh, I would say these are magazines. Well, you don't have to show magazines, but you know. I thought so. Okay. Well, I I was that. That's what okay, I got. So yeah, yeah. Those they were. I mean, usually Bruce Tim's boobs are kind of small. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, um, well, not his personal boobs. I should say. Oh. <laughs> you're so like, controversial. Oh, yeah. we're, we're trying to be non-controversial. Look what you're doing, making fun of Bruce Tim's boobs. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've never checked out his boobs, so I don't know. So these magazines um, are, are supposedly super. Uh, they're they're they are cool. Those are Afterlife of Archie. They're pretty cool. I had no idea they were done in magazine form. They, yeah, they're, they're, the they're, first they're, the first ones were yeah, and then they did it as a comic as well. Oh shoot, that's one of the ones I had to show. Bill Ward. Uh, Noon, fun and co and comedy. July of nineteen seventy nine. Right. Right. I had that book very handy too. And this one I don't have to think. One sec, wait, 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 wait. Stephen, go back. We can't go. You can't go back, Alan. You just can't <laughs> go back. See, I had that book. I had it handy. So yeah, I I love Bill Ward. He's awesome. I do too, very much. 
and let's get the light right. I even have that one to show too. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's like okay. cut from the same cloth. Uh, I'm not sure if I have that one. I have a bunch. Like you, it's like a big stack. It's on, it's in a mess. Well, on the floor. Alan, you have a heck of a lot more of these than I do. I know that this is a good uh, yeah. one. Yeah, that's a good. I have that as well. That's a good one. Yeah, I like the spanking covers. They're pretty awesome. Interesting. Mm. You don't say. That's the same <laughs> picture, isn't it? Bro? This is uh, Mrs. Pollitt. Yes, we're here to help, baby. <laughs> This one is quite, uh, this is a little bit, uh, it's too much. I can't do that one. <laughs> you can't do that one. Now everyone's no, no, going to be like, what was it? What was it? What was it? This is too much. <laughs> Ellen is into, no, I just, I think they're, you know, some cute. Yeah, ones. I need a couple of those. Oh, nice. And These those are complete, right? Yes, sir. Are they, are they complete? Wow. Yeah. Why don't you put the mask, pull the mask out and show us? Like <laughs> Because no, my mother did my, my parents didn't raise any fools for children. <laughs> uh here's some here's a here's a really fun one. Uh this is uh Betty Grable. Oh nice. Yeah. Uh Peter Peter uh Gibbon. Driven. Right? Driven, driven. Yeah. Nice. And who did you say the woman is? Betty Grable. Do you know who Betty, Betty Grable, Grable is? No, 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 sorry. No, on, honestly, you don't know who Betty Grable no, is? No, 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 I don't. I really don't. Betty Grable was the pinup girl of World War II, and she married Harry James. Don't know either of them. Harry James was a trumpet player. Okay, okay. See, I, I different generation. I just don't know. Well, it's not my generation. I just, but I, it's the swing but era. But you're sort of influenced by it. I just picked that one up recently. Mine's in really beat up copy though. That's nice looking. Does it have the glasses? Yep. Oh wow, very. You know how hard it is to find it with the glasses. I know, and you have to pay a little bit more when you get it. Here's another Dreven. Mm -hmm. uh, no, nice. actually, this is a uh, Merlin. Oh really? It looks yeah. like a Dreven. It does, very similar. But she looks like a Georgia peach, doesn't she? Southern yeah. girl. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's very nice. She's sewing lots of leg. Oh, wait. Oh, so, okay. So, Betty Garble was the woman always painted on the war planes. So of, I, I knew of, of them. She's always looking over her shoulder as you look at her legs and Fanny. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the image of her, but I didn't know who, I didn't know her name. Betty Grable. Betty Grable. Wow. Very nice. I think her first movie appearance was in Flying Down to Rio with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. She was one of the chorus girls, but she stood out. Betty was known as the best legs in Hollywood. They were insured for a million dollars. I is that true? I think that's true, actually. I it is true. I, I remember he, I actually heard that story. I didn't didn't connect all the names together, but I actually did hear that. But by the way, show that previous book just because you didn't say what it was, and it's actually a key. You know the it's the first uh, V for Vendetta and first um, Miracle uh, Man. Miracle Man. It's a very cool book, and that looks like it's actually really nice grade. Usually those warrior ones are really beat up, but hammered. Yeah. yeah, I lucked out. First yeah, V for good. Vendetta too, right? Yeah. yeah. Here's an, just a poster that's in there. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Nice. Just randomly. You showed me that. I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. I don't remember Flash looking like that. It's like. Uh, well, if you if you certainly would have remembered it. You saw it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Bleaker, that's the it's the first V for Vendetta. It's that's why I, that's why I got it. But it's also Miracle Man's first appearance. Oh, Got a yeah, couple of, two of them. Oh, what a you two, are. There's three. Two or three. <laughs> How many of those? Is that wow, three or that's two, really Stephen? Oh, just, just, just two. That's pretty. Oh, just two. Okay, just two. 
I, I just thought this was such a wacky looking cover. I, I really like that one, actually. When you showed me that, I've been trying to find it since, but it's not one you see very often. It's very nice. I like skiing covers, too, because, I yeah, I did skiing. Okay, let's see here. Yes, it was a long-running British magazine. Best detective cases. Wow. Very nice. Isn't that a honey? Very nice. So do you have like a special box for your uh, magazine? Yeah, magazine box. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a magazine. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. I didn't mean that. I wasn't trying to be flip. It's just a little bit. It, the box is a little bit. Brian, you just you're too quick. It's um, like, yeah, moron. It's a magazine box. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I'm sorry. Because I've been. I, I use banker boxes, and I have the actual magazine boxes as well. Love it. See these images are so you they're 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 so real you can almost touch them. Well, that's a little bit like you know that uh, Betty and Wilma when we were talking about a little uh, yeah but symbology it's there. It's even better symbology. Who's making up words now? So, um, okay, so Bleaker. Okay, so Bleaker. <laughs> the way those warrior ones work was um uh it's Alan Moore, right? Alan Moore basically published the story in parts through the warrior series. So this would be the first part of V for Vendetta. And then and I think it ran- It's issue number one. This is yeah. issue number one, so it's where it starts. Yeah, and first then it ran- right, It's a UK, book. It ran it's a UK book, though. I yes. think it, V for Vendetta ran like 11 issues or something like that. And it's like something- you can, see, you can see right here, V for Vendetta. That's where it starts. Yeah. And there's and Miracle, Miracle Man is the question mark. Hero mm -hmm. Reborn. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so it, it it was like a serial. And this was one, and this was one. I was so excited that uh, I had the first appearance of Miracle Man, which it really isn't, because the first appearance of Miracle Man is a worth is a fortune to get it. Mm -hmm. What is the first? I can't remember. Alan. It's it's Marvel Boy number one, right? Isn't it? I, I, I'm 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 a thinking. Something like that. Oh, that's nice. Shoplifting, vice, gang wars, mugging, dope, girls of the cellar clubs. And she looks like the gal that was um, in Sound of Music, uh, Eleanor Parker. It looks like Eleanor Parker. You are a real movie file. It's pretty impressive. Like I, I, I really got to learn my names for a lot of these movie ones. It's just I just like the uh, the kind of the 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 French girl kind of thing going on here. Of yeah, course, no, nice. oh yeah, yeah. And what what uh -huh. there's a key about that book as well. I forgot what it was. I don't know. Um, I think it's where they bring back a lot of the characters, Lady Luck. I think it is the maybe the fem, uh, um, what's the name? Fem Force. I think it might be first Fem Force or something like that. And then we got Howard the Duck. I actually had my Howard the Ducks too, <laughs> all ready to show. Okay, it's like we have the same box. It's really weird. Oh, that one's interesting. Jack Here Kirby. Old. Jack Kirby. That's very cool. Oh, and Crawl. Now, is that the same as the movie, the Crawl? Cull. Isn't it? Is it? Oh, oh, Crawl. I'm thinking Crawl. Sorry, because I, I can't see King, that. King Crawl. You know, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Crawl the movie. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yes. he has a little I spinner thing, and the guy gets crushed with the with the blades. I love that movie. That was one of my favorite movies as a kid. I thought it was Crawl when I saw it. So, oh, Pussycat. Okay, here. While you have that out, look at the price. How much is it? Thirty-five cents. Forty cents in Canada. Okay. So, I uh, okay. You keep on showing that one sec. Here, I gotta grab something. Oh. 
Hey, one sec. I'm going to try to grab it since you, you're showing it. Bill Everett. Hey, wait, yeah, yeah, Bill Everett. Okay, wait. Oh, I'm here. Okay, one sec here. Okay, you keep showing that. And then I'll show this one. So I'm not sure. Okay, wait, I got to figure out how to zoom in online. Look at the price online. Can't make it out. It's 40, 40 cents. cents. So there's two versions of this. There's your version, and then there's this version. This is the super rare version. There's only four known to exist. Wow. And you got one of them. I got one of them. I also have that one as well, but mine's graded. Very so, good. Congrats. Cool? Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know how I got it? It was no. in like um, some heritage lot where they were just, they had a, like a big magazine lot. And I saw this one. I was like, oh, I, I would like to get a second copy of it so they could actually read it because my copy was in a slab. Mm. And then I was like, because you can't find it online to read. So, um, so Alan, do you have Marvel Superheroes UK number 387? Mar <laughs> what is that? Marvel, Marvel Super Superheroes UK number 387. It came out the same year as Warrior, and it says it's the first mention of Miracle Man. It was uh, written by uh, Alan Moore, and he has Miracle Man, Miracle Man's name etched into a gravestone in the background of one of his stories. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know that book. I, I first am... mention of Miracle Man. Interesting. I'm I'm <laughs> blissfully unaware. Hmm. Um, I was too. <laughs> so I'm just looking have, on key collector. Did you have more to show? Oh I'll yes. Make big, I'm, I'm, uh, I pulled all all of the ones I have out. Mm. Lo, this monster. And this is the another. Oh, I bought is that your the the I actually. Map? I actually bought this one um, uh, from my uh, comic guy, uh, and uh, just I don't know where he found it. It's just it's just like like new. It's really cool. And did you know that it was the first appearance of the metal bra? No, it's uh, I I know that the metal bra is high on the list indeed with you, Alan. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 edifying and gratifying to know that that's the, the first of that stylized, wonderful. Uh, well, thing it's, it is. it's cool because that's what I like whenever I think of Red Sonia, it's that that look that metal bra look that's the look yeah um, my father uh, when he was reading comics one of his favorites uh, he liked King comics mm -hmm. because the, the it had a lot of the article or a lot of the characters that he did, we didn't have in the local papers and that's the way I think it was Flash Gordon that they we didn't have or something that he wanted to see because he liked Alex Raymond and so, uh, so he and, and one of the characters that he liked in it was the little king, and oh. uh, the little king uh, was uh, if you've ever read this the stuff, uh, Soglau. Uh, actually, Soglau actually looked like the little king, uh, and he would dress up like the little king and make you know presentations for king features. But um, the thing was that when uh, the Imperial Hotel, when we purchased the Imperial Hotel in 1950 here in, in Portland, um, the restaurant that we had, we had a leasehold uh, that we that basically we had to wait for the lease to run out because they were not very good operators at all. Uh, and then they completely gutted the space and then we they were going to they put in a restaurant and uh, and they wanted to have something that was in keeping with the whole Imperial royalty thing. And so we called it the King's Coffee House. Oh, and my father you. said, said to my, my grandfather, he says, Dad, I know exactly the image that what I want to have. I want to use the little king uh, from the comics. I'd like him to be the logo. My dad wanted to have a comic character as mm -hmm. the logo for our restaurant. That's very and cool. So, so that's what you guys used? Uh, well, uh, let me just finish. And so he, <laughs> contacted, he contacted King Features. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, yes, we have a restaurant and we're in the Imperial Hotel. We want to call it the King's Coffee House. 
I would like very much to use the little king. And they said, we would be more than happy to let you do that, Mr. Gentner. The cost of that will be $100,000. Wow. And that was in 1954. So yeah, wow. like a million dollars. And basically. my grandfather bought the entire Imperial Hotel for a hundred thousand dollars in nineteen fifty. <laughs> so, uh, but so the the my father he said you you're kidding me. They said no, it's a really good deal, hundred thousand dollars. And I think there were other payments and stuff. Dad said thank you very much. So he took the picture of the little king, and he had a guy down in in uh, California. I can't think of Coppage and something or another, some fancy outfit. And they made basically, they knocked off one that looked sort of like the Little King. And that was a, then, we still had the Little King, but that was that. And they did have Little King sandwich shops. And I don't know how they could afford to do that, mm -hmm. uh, to how they could afford $100,000. And the weird uh, thing is, I'm not really super familiar with the Little King. It's not like um, oh, it's a fun, It's a fun strip. They have actually have a com collected where you can look at them. He always, the, the King is always trying to help. Uh, he always gets in trouble. He, he wants to do something. As a matter of fact, the little king is in one of the uh, Popeye or Betty Boop cartoons where they have the little king is in there, too. Uh, and so which is if you YouTube, but you can see if you put the little king, there's some. But he always had these sight gags was pretty. He didn't talk very much, but it was always these sight gags. Wow. Oh, Marilyn Monroe. In 3D. Have you tried it out? It's true. She comes right off the page. <laughs> and this one's so, this book is so big that I actually have to keep it in my magazine box. It's All American 53. Oh, wow. Is it like a super thick book? It looks thick. Wide. It's a really wide book. And it's a thick book, too. It's an, it's an it early thick. one. Oh, it looks very cool. Mm -hmm. And what's on the letter? It says, something deliver this mail. Green Lantern delivers the mail. And oh. what it is, they find this, they're in some house or something, him and uh, Doiby Dickles, and they find this this mail. And so he says, by gosh, Doiby, I'm going to deliver all this mail. And so he then he takes the mail and he delivers it from, you know, long before and all these people and all the stories of the different people that he runs into. It's, it's a cute story, actually. Okay. It's kind of fun. I'm surprised they never made a big blockbuster movie about that. <laughs> oh, I was going to show that. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Steven, you're, killing me. you're killing me, man. You're killing me. Okay, one sec. Beat me to the punch. One sec here. I got to do this again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny that we all we, we have it okay so okay should know okay don't show any more of the books that i'm going to show okay all right i'll <laughs> this will be the last one i show for now and i'll let you take over i'll show a couple then that say so that's cool yeah that's a good one i i have mine slabbed to that all right take over lead on mcduff okay okay i'll show some Show some books before you get to show them because you're going to show the same ones i can tell we're, we're both showing the same stuff it's really weird it's like you're like reading my mind or something um so uh <laughs> so, so before i show my things uh brian did you have things you want to show i uh, i just have stuff that i think i've shown before it's all uh, good okay right, I'll, I'll i'll show mine okay so uh, we're going to show this one first. Make you big. Oh, I thought I did make myself big. I didn't click it. Okay. We got Hellrider number one. Skyfall, is that it? Yeah. Prototype. Uh, Skywall. 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 Uh, it's the prototype of uh, uh, Ghost Rider. And uh, it is the first female um, black superhero. Uh, the butterfly is in this book. And they only had two issues. This one's, I thought this one was kind of cool. I think the that colors are very, very vibrant co covers, uh, cover colors. 
And then this is another one that's really cool. This is where they bring back the heap. This is Psycho. I really like that. Famous from Airboy, right? Yeah. He originally appeared in Airboy uh, way back when. He was like a German pilot that crash landed into a swamp swamp and uh, became the swamp creature. (laughs) And he's actually the prototype for swamp thing and man thing. Yep. That's what year is it? Uh, so this one is from the 70s. This is much later, obviously. This is, I, I believe, 71, 1971. And the heap was that in was that in Smash comics that the heap what was no, it? No, no, he was in Airboy comics. Airboy, Airboy, that's right. Airboy. Yeah, yeah. And then we got some psycho. Free, free, so psycho free. number one. Yeah. yeah. Nice brain cover. <laughs> hey, when that happens. I Yeah, it's, it, it happens sometimes. Actually, his arm looks a little weird on the other side. Like, look. It's like... It does. It's like it's the it's baby it's like hand. A, it, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. Okay. And then this one is made with with love and blood. <laughs> so it's got, it's got like the band members actually put their blood into the, the ink thing. When they did I remember story. that. That was a big, that was a huge deal at the time. I wonder yeah. what the print run, what was the print run? Of course, it's I don't know. so dilute, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be diluted. Like, I was thinking, like, you know, if you're a really good geneticist, you could, like, take the comic and, like, you know, extract the DNA from it and, like, uh, clone the KISS uh, band members. And that's so, yeah. how Groot, Groot was made. That's how Groot was made, yeah. Um, he was once a wood and DNA. human DNA. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. I don't know. It's a pretty cool book. So, so yeah. Heap was actually Air Fighters. Air oh. Fighter, yes, Air Fighters, but Air Fighters is Air Boy. It later, yeah. the, the publication changed its name to Air Boy later on. Yep, Air Fighter Comics number three. Yeah, I I really appreciated you uh, 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 turning me on to Valkyrie. Uh, oh, okay. because I, uh, awesome. <clears throat> I found that copy that I just, I, I just, I liked the character. And of course, Dave Stevens was actually my first exposure to it with the Dave Stevens cover that he has with her. Yeah, I really, I, I really like Valkyrie. Uh, I've been trying to pick up a lot of her cover appearances from the golden age. The story is, if you get it, comic book plus has it, I, read I, the I story. It. I it's a it. great story. It's She's story. Evil, actually... she, she got a heart of gold. Yeah. No, she was super evil. Like Valkyrie she, was super to begin evil. with, but she yeah, isn't. Yeah. But she didn't turn. She 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 changed. It was great. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, she was like even like up to like way like way into the story. It's like at the very end, she just says, "Oh, I guess I'm not going to be evil anymore." And, well, because he was going to kill the 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 well, commandant was going to kill, was kill was, all of her friends because they the they they wanted to help Airboy out because Airboy is getting the hell pounded out of him. Because they oh, wanted but, the secret to his plain birdie. Okay, so the, the yeah, so there was a couple steps before that. So what was happening was she actually okay, I'll tell the story. So Valkyrie, she had these air maidens, and they were like sort of a flying team, and they basically bomb and attack uh, the right. air boys air air. The air, British. They were she was attacking. Yeah. They were attacking the British. Attacking the British, and Birdie is air boys specialized plane that basically has wings and it flaps <laughs> it can it can go up vertically it can do a whole bunch of things and what happened was uh air boy you know after they got attacked he followed them back to their base and then attacked their base and so she flew up and they had a little air battle and uh it ended up that air boy got captured and when he got captured they tortured him. She tortured him, actually. Yes, with a whip. whipped him. She, was <laughs> she whipped him. him. She was like beating him, to, and like she was just, like super evil girl. And then uh, the other, all these air maidens are. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, it's so sad that he's getting beaten up. And <laughs> so, so they they actually um, helped him escape. And then when that was found out, they got punished, and they got all like you know they were going to get whipped as well. And so she she found Airboy and said, "Hey, look, I need if you give me the secret to Birdie, then I can save the Air Maidens, right?" But still, even after that point, 
she she betrayed Airboy and said, "Oh, she gave that information to her commander, so that he would then get, let the other girls off the hook." But and then he still said, "No, he wouldn't do it." And then she says, "That's it, brother. I'm done with you." Yeah. But, so bad. my point is, it took like a lot <laughs> before she becomes good. Like so, yeah. So well, she sits on his lap all the way home as she's flying back home. I too. know. Yeah, that's that. That's the other nice thing about it, the way it ends. Um. Okay, so uh, so wait, I also have a warrior book, and you know what the key significance of this one? This is number two. It has Miracle Man's blood in the ink. No, <laughs> <laughs> but it is Miracle Man's first cover appearance. So uh, the other one, it, he's like a mystery bubble. So this is the actual first appearance. Gotcha. And who did the cover? Uh, good question um do you know i don't know i do i do not i'm i mean i'm asking because i do not know or is this one of those like trick i don't know ones no I no no I'm, <laughs> I'm, no I'm, not very, I'm not very tricky <laughs> i have no idea who did the cover if anyone knows you can tell us um but yeah so that's that one and then i have this one. Ooh, that's cool this is like sort of day of the triffids yes yeah, it even says Day of the, the Triffids. Movie, the movie Day of the Triffids is so different because they could hardly <laughs> even show them. It. You never hardly see them because they couldn't figure out how to do it. Yeah, but this is this is a pretty cool cover. Um, I actually really like Day of the Triffids. It's, Day of the Triffids and The Walking Dead are yeah. really similar. <laughs> really similar. Um, and this one is another actually kind of a cool, cool key. Well, other than that being an ice cube, I mean, it's actually <laughs> a cool key. <laughs> uh, so do you know what the key significance of this one is? I, I uh, the, An interview with Sid Caesar. Yeah, well, but no, that's not the reason. This I is actually no the idea. first appearance of um, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, Creature of the Black Lagoon? Yep, made his first. I have a question for you. When did Spy vs. Spy start in Mad Magazine? I, I don't know, but I know I um I know I looked it up as a kid because I was big into Mad as a kid and I had like I actually have like a, a ton of Mad magazines. I was actually had a subscription from like early eighties all the way up till like the mid nineties. I had a subscription to Mag magazine. Um and I looked it up because I was curious at that time where Don Murden and uh, Spy versus Spy and all those kind of key things that you associate with. Um, and the first backfold one. Yeah. I, and I made sure that my collection had those. So I have them somewhere. Uh, so Mad 60, I guess, is the first Spy versus Spy. Matt, you're amazing. Yeah. Thank you. That's a nice look up. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I have a lot of those things, um, but they're not in this pile. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate that you do that. Yeah, he's it's, very it's good really, at Googling. You're really he's good at that. He's a good Googler. Okay, and one more I'll show. This is the first appearance of um, Apocalypse. Not This is not Apocalypse, but Inside. Cool. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Somebody told me about it, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then so, you said, I got to get me one. Yeah. So, yeah. And then Don Merton, Mad 34. Is that right? That sounds a lot earlier than what I expected. Well, Don Martin was a staple at Mad. Yeah. I wonder when, Ar when did Aragonas start use, putting the little cartoons in the margins? Oh, that's another thing. Yeah. When did Aragonas start with Mad? So, 1956. I think I have Mad 34, though. Um, if I don't, I'm, I'm going to have to get it. I thought I had the first Don Martin. So um, your Warrior Magazine number two? Yeah. That Stephen wanted to know. I think uh, Kuramai uh, got part of it. Uh, the main part uh, is uh, the Miracle Man part is uh, Gary Leach is the Miracle Man oh, part. Is the is is artist? So Yeah, and then there's a bunch of insets in there. So Steve oh. Dillon uh, who later became kind of a famous artist in his own right, uh, is does the press button inset, and David Lloyd does the V for Vendetta inset, and oh, okay. Paul Neary did the Mad Men inset. Wow. 
wow oh very quite cool. a lot quite a lot of hands in, in that. Um, one cover okay that's very yeah. cool and oh okay we got matt 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 finds the, the information uh surgo was uh, september 1963. interesting i was 10. wow i was 10 minus i was not <laughs> even thought of yet <laughs> A plunder in my father's eye. I, I was minus ten years old in at that time. So yeah, I I have some stuff to show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Apocalypse is hanging with the living monolith. <laughs> yeah. They were good friends. They, they were, were good, good friends. friends. They just sort of hung out together. Destruction, you know. Oh, and Back some woman day. is some woman is joining us. Dirty. <laughs> Not sure what that. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Your, but your wife. I will find out. <laughs> right. I'm shifting from magazines. Okay, good. good. Here is an LB Cole Contact Comics. Oh yeah. And this is a, a, a interesting cover in that uh, the character in the foreground, the Indian, is uh, Tommy Tommy Ho Tommy Hawk. Oh, okay. And uh, he and his crew his tribe quote unquote all flew p-40 warhawk aircraft which is what ah. that plane is right there very cool and uh tommy is the is the leader and he's the best one and everybody wants to try to catch him and the the germans know about him and all this other stuff but they all put on their feather bonnets and everything and they climb into the planes they take off and they go after the germans it's pretty cool that is pretty cool and this one is Crime Mysteries. Oh, that's nice. I've been trying to get that one actually. It's a really, really tough book for. I mean, you know, everybody, everybody, everybody says it's a tough book. Well, I've been. No, I, I want to get. I'm trying to get the run, and that's one of the ones I'm missing. I love I, the I, the gimmick of that cover. That's an amazing cover. Watch that punk's face when we turn around. Tee hee. This is a stick up, folks. And then rip him to shreds. <laughs> the werewolf and a vampire, right? Yeah, the werewolf and a vampire. I think you picked the wrong couple. Um, I thought that this was Betty Page and was an the earlier right. image, uh, but all it is is a gal who had similar features and had a Page Boy haircut, which is of the day. Mm. But I mean, that, Betty Page really made that haircut popular. Oh, she made it her own. She mm. she made it her made it hers. Oh, wow. Nice. I'll be right back. Okay. Sure. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> You're so negative. You know, both of these gals went shopping at the same store and they're, they're, the bottoms of their dresses are all torn. And I've, I never could understand what is this green guy? What's going on with that guy's hair? It weed is it's like out. blowing. It's blowing. It's a really windy day up high. It's really, <laughs> and and the skull guy that's got the gal, uh, and uh, has a bullet hole right in the middle of the skull. Uh, she's like got a weird look too. She's almost looked like she's drugged or something. She's looking down. <laughs> yeah, and the and the little lanterns are looking. They're, they're the lanterns are looking at them. There's a lot of skulls on this. But it's this is a one shot diary of horror number one, but it's a one shot. Very interesting. Avon. When I bought this, the big collection that had the three Miss Furies and Crown Comics and all that stuff, there was one uh -huh. doll man. There was one doll man in it. It was just this this guy, the 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 stuff that he chose to collect it was very eclectic and he he had a doll but they're all nice so you know, really nice looking copy though yeah fun stuff and this is my spouse's book but i i bought it for her but i keep it is the lb cole dracula cover that's a cool one so how many collection how many books does susan have in her collection i know of one i was there when she picked up one Susan has as many comics as she wants. <laughs> she, well, she has, picked up, uh, what was it? Was it a Bambi? First, uh, appearance of Bambi? first appearance of Bambi. She has this one. She has Dark Shadows. 
uh, and she has some uh, some Uncle Scrooges uh, mm -hmm. and some other stuff too. She was looking at, at maybe some Popeyes too that she was kind of eyeing, but um, eh? <laughs> eh? I mean, eh. not a eh, question mark. Eh? <laughs> this is, this is an Ottenheimer cover, and the the booking agent who is this 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 mook down at the bottom with the cigar, he says, uh, "Not bad, Miss Jones, but can you do something really different?" Mm -hmm. I don't know what else. I don't know what else she could do. <laughs> Alan He's... actually pointed this out. He already had this one. He collects the A run, uh, and this one was on. Uh, and it was, just, it was something like forty dollars or forty five. You don't even have to say it now. You just ding the bell. Huh? <laughs> I, I I have to. Uh, it's uh, uh, I uh, these that's, next. That's how you get your royalty check, right? Every time you ding the bell. <laughs> was, not only do the wings. Uh, Alan's back. I'm back. Um, I got these two books from a guy that came over and and made a deal with me, and and the guy was brutal. Oh yeah. Yeah, that guy's a jerk. Yeah, I heard. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't don't know. trade with him. Don't let trade him with in, him. Let him in the door. I mean, my God. Steven, you shouldn't trade with him anymore. I, I, I'll, I'll. Yeah, I'll... I figured you'd say that, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he'll he'll I step will, in for I you. Will, he'll take the door. You know, just to I don't be nice. I really want to do that anymore. Stephen, just to be nice to you, I will. I'll take all his trades so that I'll protect you from him. There you go. I'll show. I'll show. The next thing I'll show is <laughs> the books that Alan wants to trade for. Okay. So far, so far go that ahead, we have handled on. No, go, go ahead. ahead. You show your things. That's actually, it. That was my bunch. That was my I, bunch. Go ahead. I actually had a couple more that I wanted to show you, uh, Brian. Well, then, yeah. No, that's cool. Sure. Um. So you want so, to show this? You want me to? One more. Just one thing. Just see you, Brian. This okay. For you. And there's so a I magazine extra, you didn't show either. I have an extra copy of this. Didn't we? I thought I said I was it. Did you have a? I had a raw. You have copy. a raw one this and a, an extra slabbed copy too. Extra slab of nine eight. Yep, sure. We'll talk about it. <laughs> it's, a, it's not. It's not super expensive, actually. It used to be. Yeah, that that really went sky high, and then it just tanked. It was up to like about two, three hundred dollars. Now I think it's like fifty bucks. <laughs> it's just like so fickle. Yeah, so, so uh, Alan is interested so far. So far, we, we've started making a little list. Whenever we have like 15 or 20 minutes spare, we'll we'll get on a little video conference and we'll talk. So, yeah, one of the books he's interested in is this one, which that is one? Uh, definitely, definitely want that. The first Popeye comic. First Popeye original story. I looked it up later. It's the first. Uh, original story. No, it's not the original story. It's because the original story is a blue cover. This is the first four color, I think, with him. Oh, okay. But, yeah. And then we got a uh, Tip Top Comics number 25 from The Platinum Age. 1938. Mm -hmm. Early ones. And Mighty Mouse Adventures number one. Yeah, that's one I'm super interested in. Which is in. the only book in that series. And they retitled they number two as a different title. It's like Mighty Mouse Comics. Instead oh, and of Mighty I want to get Adventure. that Popeye with the fish, by the way. Oh, you do? You didn't win that auction? Okay, I do yeah, still. I, I, I have it set aside for you. And then also, uh, the, the last one we've talked about is Strange Tales 97, which yeah. is the prototype of uh, Aunt May and uh, Uncle, Uncle Ben. ben. Uh, instead of Spider-Man as a nephew they have a, a young lady living with them that is under their care who's in a wheelchair who turns out to be a mermaid, a mermaid yeah. <laughs> i thought that was kind of cool that's a great story yeah. hmm. and she keeps having these uh dreams of of the ocean. the ocean and at the end she goes to the ocean and she jumps out of her wheelchair and when she hits the water she turns into a mermaid and swims away that's mm. nice i like that mm. yeah so those Brian, are the have you, Brian, have you, dampened, have you dampened the doorstep of uh, Naughty Granny and her daughter yet? No, I have not been to their doorstep since the 
the great zombie tramp invasion of two thousand and twenty-four. <laughs> I got me a mess of, of, of zombie tramp, and it's all because yeah, of no, this facilitator tramp. guy, this 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 Svengali, this mesmer, who who's just put put the hoodoo on me, and then I'm getting all these books. Oh my gosh! <laughs> zombie <laughs> tramp's awesome. Yeah, isn't it fun? It's kind of cute, and there's a knife going through her skull and the skin's coming <laughs> off. It's, oh, yeah. kind of, it's kind of fun. It's kind of so, fun. So Alan, there was a magazine missing from your magazines. The one that the one that I sent you when you got your piece of artwork. Which one? The magazine that I sent you when you got your piece of artwork. Oh, um, actually, I just saw that recently. Where did I put that? Uh, one sec here. Oh. <laughs> Like, I was like, oh, it's going to pop up. I like, I have, Brian, you like to make Alan work. You know, as he gets I do. Alan. I do. Did you, did so, you, so of those, there it is. There it is. Nice. It has a little sticker thing. One sec here. I'm going to move the sticker off and put it on the back. She wanted love, but got death. That doesn't seem like a very good It's a bondage deal. cover, too. It's a bondage cover. And like, if you notice, there's knives sticking out of the wall behind her. It's actually, there's a knife going over the logo. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Very, you know, it looks a lot like uh, Jane Russell, doesn't it? From uh, yeah, the, a little bit. The, yeah, from the movie with the Howard Hughes movie. Actually, that no, was from the uh, Golden Age Honey Hole. There. So, oh. I walked in so, and he had a pile of detective magazines and he, and that one was on top and I'm like, well, those are new. And he's like, yeah, five bucks a piece. And I'm like, let's see, bondage. Magazine <laughs> no, from nineteen. So what was it? What year is it from? It's got a, the year on the sticker. Yeah, nineteen forty eight. Yeah, 1948 bondage magazine. I'm like, yeah, I'll pick that up for five dollars. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. cool. It's cool. And then I actually picked up this one, which is all like that one was revealing detective. And I picked this one up as well. Human detective. Human detective. Human detective. And I thought it was cool. She's like reading a book on poisons. Uh, so, she doesn't appear very happy about the situation, Alan. I know she looks a little. So, she has a little bit of. She a, looks like you don't want to be on the wrong side of her. Would you <laughs> like? Would you like to come over for dinner? Yeah, uh, exactly. no, the no. The, the, the revealing detective. I think it's hilarious because it has revealing detective and then little tiny mice type. It says cases. Yeah, no. Both. <laughs> well, that's I was last saying word? that they're what both from the same word? series. That's oh, it says revealing detective, like it's like you know, and then the lot, and then it says cases and little tiny oh, mice right, yeah, yeah, yeah. like right there. there. Cases, I see it, yeah. <laughs> and this is that's why I wanted to show this other one because it's the same way. Oh, look at that! So it is. So I thought they were from uh, the same. Uh, that's interesting. They must Sisters be related. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah they be same, related. same. Must be the same company. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So that's why I showed you that one. Are they about the same I same year? What are they from the same year? I don't know when the other one's from the human detective. I'm not sure. Okay. I have another what? I have one more magazine ish to show. Right, sure. Okay. Uh this was produced in 1944 by ME Magazine Enterprises. Uh and it features a cover by um Craig Flessel, who did the Sandman. But it's the United States Marines. That's a great cover. And probably one of my favorite propaganda covers of the war. Uh, these, the United States Marines uh, uh, magazine uh, was, uh, I mean, the case on this thing is just enormous. Um, and it's, I, I, I won't say that it's swimming in it, but it's obviously way too large to fit into a regular uh, uh, su su uh, size slab, but the um, I mentioned I told the story before with uh, Alan was that the metaphor for the Japanese in the war was as an octopus reaching out with each each arm, uh, engulfing uh, like like the octopus would. You know the the arm goes out and grabs a hold and pulls it in and then it eats it, which is the that they showed uh, the octopus like the home base of Japan. Uh, and then uh, unfurling and rolling out and, and engulfing all the stuff around it. And they had uh, animations and other things that would then show that. And this is very much in keeping with that. And on the back, photo enlargements is sort of a ho-hummer. 
but um, yeah, but this, but the image on this, I always thought, uh, and then the other thing too is flamethrower covers are, there are guys that collect flamethrower covers um, and uh, some with, uh, that are more notorious, but the, the, uh, but I think that Mr. Flessel, I actually had an opportunity to actually meet Mr. Flessel. Uh, and this was in 1995 when I became an advisor, and he was at the Sotheby's auction that we were, that Mr. Jeppy put us uh, put us all onto a, a chartered bus and took us down to New York from Baltimore, where we could act. We went in and participated in the uh, in the um, uh, auction, and that's where I met Carmen Infantino. That's where I met Mr. Flussell and his wife, and then Art Modell and his wife were there as well, and they were. They were greeting every. They they were greeting everyone and and what have you as far as uh, coming to participate in the in the auction. I bought some strange tales uh, at there uh, that were uh, of some. I I don't remember exactly if they were pedigrees, but they were very nice strange tales that I didn't have. I didn't buy a whole heck of a lot more, and I can't really remember what the big sh the headliners of that particular show uh, were. But uh, the, the the last thing I'll say about this, and I, I, it always struck me, I thought we were going into, into some fancy palatial building to have, you know, br brightly lit high ceilings uh, with people well, you know, fancy dressed, you know, the, the coordinators and stuff, having the books laid out with good lighting and all this stuff. And what it was, was this sort of a dirty looking uh, uh, four story building on some side street and then there the main entrance and you walked up from the main entrance to the mezzanine level which is where it was and then you walked down sort of sunk down in and it had shag carpeting and it had banquet tables it was a very low ceiling and there wasn't a whole lot of air circulation and people could just walk up to the books that were being sold and rummage them and and munge them and pull them out and look at them in other words there was absolutely no control whatsoever for, for the care of the books uh there were some people wandering around and uh, in truth the people that were there the the people that were looking at of course all of us guys that were collectors you know and a lot of the dealers that became advisors everybody we were all extremely careful with the stuff but it was open to the public so the public could walk in and munge around with you know hundreds you know thousand dollar books and stuff and they're picking them up and looking at them like no big deal it was it was it was really weird and that's what happens still at conventions. If you have very nice things in your box, in the boxes that people look at, that the, the public, the, it's you, it's weird how people don't even really want to buy anything, but they feel compelled to walk up and then they want to, they don't even hardly even look at what they're riffling, but they want to lay hands on it and riffle and riffle and riffle. One of my dealer friends, you know, his nicer books, he says, I'd like to look at that book. And my friend said, no. He says, what do you mean? No. I said, well, I just don't choose to, it's just for display. And, you know, like that, he sized the guy up because he didn't have three nickels in his, in his pocket and he wants to hold a, a $2,000 book. And he says, no, but you can look at it, but no, well, I want to handle <laughs> it. He says, I want to handle it. He says, I'm sure you do, but you're not going to handle that. <laughs> it was, it's just that That's kind hilarious. of, the public, the public can be so, I don't know, stupid uh, is that, I mean, they're so they don't understand it very well uh so i've been at shows where people are damaging books going through bins it's i can't yeah. stand that that's why i could never do it i mean i i i try so mm -hmm. hard to to have as nice as i can i don't want people touching them you know touching my books right but, right uh, and yet these people come in and says well i want to buy it so i'm going to look at it and they you know i i can't do it oh one last one uh my buddy uh there was this guy came up at the beginning of the con. There was a two-day con. And it was some book, I think it was a $50 or $60 book. And I can't remember what he told me what it was. And this guy says, I want to buy that book. He says, okay, it's $60. He says, no, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. And he says, well, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to sell it for $20. It's a $60 book. He says, well, I want it for $20. And, he, and, and so then he says, well, good luck with your life. See you later. The guy came back and I guess he came back to him about six times in the two days trying to buy this same book for 20 bucks and wow. and really got on his nerves. And I don't know what what my friend had into it. And he says, he says, you know, I finally decided I'm going to I'll sell you the book for 20 bucks. The guy says, great. He, and my friend took the book out, 
opened the thing up and he ripped the book in half. And he says, there you go, 20 bucks. Wow. And I said, how extravagant. He says, I didn't, wasn't in it anything, but the guy made me so mad that he was being such a <laughs> cheap ass. He said, I solved the problem for him. And he says, and it was worth the look on his face. Did he pay you know, the 20 bucks? He didn't, and, and <laughs> patient, he didn't give him the 20 bucks. <laughs> After that it was all funny. done. That would have been funny. Anyway. And if you pay twenty, you just you know you get like it. You get it in thirds, and you just pay like twenty five. That's 20 it. Bucks. I just it, it's just some some people are so rude about the and the etiquette of how you handle a book and and how to handle a book and all those things. And, and it you know you just wonder the the public can be so. Uh, you just have to watch yourself. You have to watch it very carefully. And these dealers that that allow the, the people the public to walk in and basically look at stuff and grab it and handle it and stuff. It's just, to mm -hmm. me, it's, it's really tough to me to look yeah, at. I, 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 I have a, I have a, so going like this through it, I, it's a little bit. Iffy. Yes, back Brian? in the, I would say back in like the, I probably say it was like the late eighties. I used to do the Portland comic book show and I was there with a friend of mine and we were Richard sharing a Finn? table. Richard Finn. No. no. It's a Coliseum <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah, it was at the Coliseum show, but we were, uh, you, I don't know who, was Richard Finn, the people who ran Richard it? Richard Finn was the one that ran the show. Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay, so we had a table together, and this, this, this not so polite gentleman came up and he was like, do you have any Captain America? And I was like, yeah, the, they're right here in my my box, and he he's looking through and he's being very persnickety <laughs> about the condition and the pricing <laughs> and everything, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm just trying to be polite to him. And my buddy's just getting kind of perturbed with the guy. And uh, the guy finally has this little stack of books and he, he's haggling over the price with me. And we, we settle on 20 bucks and my buddy puts his hands on the, the table and leans over right in the guy's face. And he says, he said something very not nice about Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy goes, you just lost a sale. And then he walked away and the guy, my buddy pulls out his wallet and hands me a $20 bill and goes, worth it. <laughs> it's it's and, and and if you're a dealer if you're a dealer and you're trapped behind a table and these people come up to you and there's no escape and sometimes you wonder why dealers have such bad attitude when you walk up i understand completely now yeah why yeah. why they why they when you you know why why they says you know why aren't you happier and i'm ready to buy and stuff well of course, probably 15 minutes before it was that same guy came up <laughs> to his table and was, was trying to, to harass him, you know, and just, you know, yeah. Oh, Kerma, I like Cap too. It wasn't, it wasn't that. It was about the guy's attitude and everything. And he just, he did it to rile the guy up. I hate him. He just did it just... to rile the guy up because he was like, he was so sick of seeing me like, you know, try to be so nice it's to the guy nice and be polite. try to be a good a good salesperson he's just like ah this isn't worth it <laughs> <laughs> politeness and civility uh the veneer oh, so of civilization far. is quite thin mm. so mm -hmm. um do you guys want to see uh, should i show a few more extra or should sure. we wrap it up? Well, sure. or we or we can know uh, uh, however however so sure you call the shots I have, a, I have a couple i have a couple of cool books left to show Ah, death dealer. Oh wait, wait! Show the death dealer. You showed that before, I think. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, I just got this from Travis just recently. And that's the nineteen, uh, the two thousand and four. This is the first, the first one, yeah. Yeah. Hey, did yeah. the Silver Age collection ever come through? You know, it was supposed to have happened on Thursday, and I haven't heard anything yet. Oh yeah, so. I was wondering about that. Whatever happened with that? Because you said, what? Um, how many boxes of silver you have coming? Or that is uh, it's it's a hundred and seventy six books, I believe. So like half a short bigger? box. A short so box. yeah, a little bit. Of, I think he said it was a short box plus, like a little stack. So okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're still waiting. Um, the fellas, uh. The person who has them is not in good health, and so they're trying to wait and be patient. No, so. were these high? These were mid grade or high grade? Some of them were. So I think there's like the the first issue where Green Goblin and Peter Parker learn each other's secret identities, and I think that one's like a fine. Um, okay. But a lot of them are like VG plus VG. So mid grade, mid grade, mid, 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 mid lower, mid, mid lower. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, but but That's still the stuff. the price on the collection was like what was it? Six uh, like, five like three bucks, or four five bucks, bucks a book. book. Yeah. Well, yeah, three or four bucks a book. It wasn't that bad. So like when you average it all out, so yeah, it works um, out. I mean, there'd be some yeah. run filler stuff, but you'd get like a few some, some run filler, but and then a lot of so I, I had only seen like maybe fifteen or twenty of the books. And then we started talking, and he started naming off some of their books, and I'm like, "That's not Silver Age. That's that's Bronze Age, and that's uh, you know." So, so not it might not be all Silver Age, but okay. um, there's, there's, okay. we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm still with the ones that I'm getting the Silver Age. I'm I'm going to be happy with it for the price I paid. So, okay. Alan, are, is pocket full of comics gone any further with you with regards to the books of his grandpa? Um, no, he. Uh, I was thinking I was going to buy a bunch from him. Well, that's what you had <laughs> indicated. And then never heard back from him. He sold a bunch. Actually, he sold one of the ones that I wanted um, uh, to some other guy. Um, and he got fairly good money for it. Um, I would have actually said less. I, I, you know, I said, oh, the, what the guy, he, I think he paid like the guy paid $2,000 for a handful of books. Okay. And. I sort of priced it out at like maybe 1300 to 1500 max. And I wouldn't like, if I'm buying like books from another person like that, but I Steven would, said your tears never, were worth it. What? <laughs> I would never, I would never pay that much for it. Like personally, I would just, I you know, understand. I would have uh, paid like a thousand for example, but um, I, 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 but, I so he to... did well. I mean, he did well on it. Okay. I wanted to ask you, I, uh, I've been going around and around with a Canadian dealer mm -hmm. on a Detective 122 and 5.5, which is the okay. Catwoman cover. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a beautiful book. Um, I've looked at Go Collect and I've looked at, at the GPA for the pricing, and it's about a it's about a five thousand dollar book uh, mm -hmm. top, and he has I think seventy five hundred dollars US on it, like ten thousand something or another Canadian. Mm -hmm. And he absolutely will not budge. I like the book. I am the twenty bucks guy. <laughs> That's my secret. <laughs> now you know. Alan is the twenty buck guy. Now you I know. Am cheap. I'm cheap. Now you know. I I I I wonder. Uh, I've looked at the and I looked at the. I clicked on the five five grade to see the track, the 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 the, the, the course of the book, mm -hmm. and the thing just goes like this, and then it just goes like this. On, uh, I mean, it's just it's just climbing like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't know if I should bite the bullet, and I, I don't no, want to jump that the... much for that book. So the do you think? Is... Do you think the condition is exactly five five, or is yeah. there any no, yeah, wiggle it's room? Slab. It's, a slab. it's slabbed. It's slabbed, and it's oh, a slab. Okay, it's slab. Okay, it's I've, slab. I've looked at. Uh, I mean, it's, the pictures are clear, and I and I like the thing, but uh, I've tried to get a hold of him uh, off of it, and and it just. I, I, there's no interest. I you offered asked me about that book. I said, I offered, you know, I, I told you what I thought it would, should be, yeah. what would be a fair price. I paid, well, you said my offer of six was generous and, was generous, uh, yeah. and, and, but, and, uh, but, but he's well, I mean, he's like 12, 1300 bucks above that. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, obviously I'm not going to choke it, but I just, it bugs me that someone is, has got such a high price on that. And I guess my question is, is that book actually, uh, does it have that kind of strength in the marketplace, Alan? Do you think it does? No, no. So so the thing is, um, Batman books haven't actually performed that well recently. Um, and it's the same thing that I noticed with um, anything that was sort of popular during COVID. So there was a few Batman keys, like first Poison Ivy, first... Um, uh, Harley Quinn first, you know, these kind of key DC girls and, and he, first cover appearance of Catwoman was one of those ones that fell into that. So mm. when I picked up my first Catwoman, like I, you know, mine's mine's for all transparency, it's a complete book, but it's, it's got a complete spine split. So it's maybe a one Oh, maybe a 0.5. Right. Mm -hmm. I paid less than, uh, by about two hundred dollars, two three hundred dollars actually, uh, less than what the previous sale for um, a one, how long uh, ago? How uh, long ago? Um, I think it was like twenty twenty two or twenty twenty three sale. Hmm. 
So see the first the first Harley I, I, since I just picked it up from Stepo, I've been looking at it. It's actually that, been that, holding that book has actually pretty been strong. Doing well, that 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 book yeah. had a dip and then it's come back up. So that's one right. of those weird ones. But um, but that's that's only because there's a TV series right now. There's a bunch of Harley stuff going on right now. Well, right? I but, sure was smart getting rid of that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but the point is, um, the anytime the you want books, it back, Stepo, just let me know. No. No, it's okay. It's it's one of those things. Um, so a lot of these uh, Batman keys haven't really performed that well recently. Uh, I feel like people are selling them to like just whatever raise some money. Uh, mm -hmm. So the price is sort of dipped. Not that I believe it's going to stay dipped. I'm just saying that they're dipped a little bit right now. That's a, such a beautiful, beautiful book. book. That is that is. Uh, I've always I have a new that. stand of that, but um, but much lower grade. <laughs> So let me ask the question: How many are in the census of that book that you're looking at, Stepo? 119, something like that. 119, yeah. 119. I mean, okay, so there's, there's 119 in that grade, or just total? All total. Told. Total. This all is like it's a, it's a golden age book, Brian. Right. So, I mean, how many more are on the market out there that you're looking at? Like well, this is, this, I'm, I'm playing Stepo's okay, devil's advocate. So, how many? Okay. How many are on the market? It's a seller's market, right? Because they can. He, well, that's okay. Like, at that price, Brian, he should be able to get a six five or seven zero. Oh. Is there a six five says, or seven available at that price that, though? And the price, no, and the sales that have happened, uh, of of recent, uh, I think below the five five. There's everything is FMV. There's no. There aren't a whole lot of sales. I think people are holding mm -hmm. on to them. It's not, there are copies, but there are, it, it, and there are some low, low off. grade ones that they want money for too, but not to the extent of this. Go ahead, Brian. So can you put a feeler out through um, Alan, your contact, the guy that, uh, your golden age guy that has all the contacts, the guy that had the Submariner, the the movie comics oh, Submariner Yenif. book? Yenif? Or Doc? Yaniv. You need, you need, can you put a feeler out from Yaniv and see if you can find a higher grade copy for Steven in a more reasonable price bracket? I, I can ask him. Like, I actually have to do a, uh, something with him soon. Um, because I, I'd hate to see Steven pay too much, but again, but there's point. a lot of people out there running for, gunning for a complete run of Batman that if there's only a hundred and something copies out there, then you know, you might have it to is, buy the book. It board. is a major key. It's the first key. It's a key cover. book. I'm not, uh, Brian, I'm not, I, I do not aspire to to have a complete run of any. Of, no, uh, no, but you, it's a key with the the Catwoman. And it's, yes, it's and kind of a good girl thing cover. right there. It's a beautiful cover. It's a cool cover. Mm -hmm. it, um, so the thing is, it does come up. It does come up. It's like one that you'll right. see like two, three times a year. Guaranteed, right? But uh, usually when it does come up, it's below a five. It's usually the lower grades that will come up. Right. Fairly so of the hundred and something that are out there, how many are five five or better? Uh, I can, I could give you the book and verse. Exactly. All I know yeah. is that the, the five five is I think a very I won't say strict grade, but it's it cer certainly looks all of a five five to me. The colors mm -hmm. and the edges are very very nice. So. Uh, so is, that, is it is it in like the top twenty five percent or the top twenty percent of the those I, graded? You think? I couldn't tell you just off probably, the top. Brian. Probably it is something like that. Um, okay. Generally, with the golden age, um, the way it works is you get like a real like skew towards the low grades, right? You know, right, and, right. And, yeah, and I'm now, just curious, like because you're saying they're coming up. I'm just curious, like what are the odds of one coming up that's going to be five five or better? I mean, if so something like that, I'd wait like for a heritage auction or um, or even my comic shops has had a few copies come up a few times. I uh, yeah. I actually I have a want uh, on on my comic shop now. Uh, let me just and check. since I have it, I will search for it for you. Like I I mean, it was on my it was high up on my want list now, but I have it. Yeah, so. maybe check with you know, and I'll, I'll ask uh, um, Ryan. Oh. I mean, well, you've been dealing with Ryan a lot, Stepo. Ryan, I mean, you could ask uh, him. Uh, Ryan. Uh, Stephen, have I shown my um, Detective One Twenty Two on my channel yet? I don't. I don't believe you have. You've talked about it, or if you did, I haven't. I'm it's looking. It's in the current unboxing, but I'm not like. Whenever I do there, those, my current unboxings, it's like a month ago, so I don't remember okay. what. Okay. Uh, there, there are uh, 135 totally graded. 
There are 119 universal. Uh, and the five, five, let's see here. And they, they give you this when you. They always click. say how many above it. Yeah, it's 10 of uh, population, 10 of 119, 42 graded higher. So actually, so that's, like, that's like a third. So you're in the top 30 percent. Yeah. Of and if, the... if I look at the tracking uh, or look at the thing here, let's see here. Uh, see, I don't like wait. the idea of paying more than FMV. I really like right, know. but but Stefo has a lot of great stories about stepping up to the plate and grabbing something that you know is. But that's, I mean, when you're talking a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars, that's quite a bit of money over FMB. Um, yeah, my, that's but if you're talking point. like oh, it's, ten it's, or twenty dollars or forty dollars, it's not a lot. No, it's but. a lot more. No, 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 no. It's 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 at least I think it's two thousand dollars too high. Yeah. No, we we right. I sort of figured it's like a, a forty-five to five thousand dollar. And that's why when I offered six, that you, you I know, said it was super fair. That was like said, that's that it, taking into account the the popularity, that is a very very fair offer. And the guy said it was a fair offer, but he says, "But I ain't budging." <laughs> he wanted just, an, that's... another thirteen hundred dollars. Right. Well. So anyway, it bugs me. I I uh, I don't like to be thwarted, uh, and uh, if it's a book, I'm I I would like to get. But those are the conditions that prevail. Uh, and it, I just can't, I can't bring myself see, to do it. I'm going to wait for the next train or, or find a better deal. Well, see, this is yeah. what okay. Like I have a few cool books that I picked up where I said, okay, I'm just going to pay what it is. I'm going to overpay. I know that I'm overpaying. But now and then after I do that, like the, there's that one book. <laughs> it drives me nuts actually. Um, it's like a Catman book. I love it, but hate it at the same time because every time I see it. You know, I paid over, I overpaid on it, and uh, three copies came up right after. I, you know, mm. and all better grade, all lower price, and well, and every yeah, time I see there's... it, now I have that negative feeling about it, where I'm like, oh, if, I overpaid for this book. I don't want Stephen to have that same experience. If there's forty something copies higher graded, then yeah, it's the odds are good that it's going to come up at some time yeah, soon. Yeah, I just. I, I, the five, five, it, it looks like a six to me. And if I can get that book in near a fine, because Alan's right, generally you don't see them, uh, a four and lower is generally how you'll, you are the ones that do seem to surface. And uh, right. I do like to go a little bit higher and, and, and the fours that I have seen and the lessers, uh, uh, I, the, the, the defects that, that it, the covered seems to lend itself to damage and, and the damage is very mm -hmm. apparent. And it's such a lovely cover. It's one that you did, wouldn't want to have that's sullied if you can avoid it. And I'm not sweaty to have it. If I, I'm not sweaty to have a copy. I would Do you like guys to want to see it. my copy? Since I'd love here. to see it. I think it's a yeah. beautiful book. So, Stephen, do you have a do you have a floor for your grade that you go to? Like, uh, I no, don't want anything no, below. No, no, I do not because I have three fives and threes, three and three fives that I've I've purchased. That I'm very happy with because of how tough they are and how they actually present. Um, and uh, a couple of those uh, uh, pre-code horror books I have: The Dead Who Walk, and the one where she's on the wheel, uh, or you know, she's being stretched on the rack, and the one with the with the gals, the three witches being burned. Those are all in the three, five-ish, four area, but they're beautiful books. They're they're actually so, I buy the book. I buy the book, not the label. Not I buy the book. Yeah. Right. So, oh, so, but it's like a, so it's like three, your, your floor? It depends on, uh, there are threes and there are threes. There are three fives. Three is a little bit low, but three five right. to so, four so is. You're not going to, in your collection, you're not going to go for, you're not going for two fives and stuff like that. He doesn't like, three he is doesn't kind like of bubbles. like the lowest <laughs> grade of anything that you would accept. Uh, it's, it's, it, uh, in a general sense, yes. But again, if the book presents beautifully and it's a tough book, the colors are good. The, the the pages aren't, you know, I don't want to buy brittle pages. And I've, I've said right. three books, but they've got tan and brittle pages. I I will avoid that. I only have one book that's brittle pages, and it's the Holocaust cover. And I question it, whether it is, and I got a 3.5, but it presents like a 5 or a 5.5. Five. And again, I'm buying the book, not the label. And so let me ask Alan. Alan, so like moldy ashes, is that the floor for you? 
<laughs> yeah, do, yeah. Half, if, if, if half the book is, is basically just dust at the bottom of the slab. Um, I, well, you've seen some of my books. They're pretty bad. Um, well, do you want to see this? I was one? just giving you a hard time, buddy. I am very impressed, as is everyone else, with your collection. All I was right. just giving you a hard time. Well, I'm going to get rid of you guys for that. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so I made a hole back there. That's, yes, that's, I see. That, that hole is actually my Batman collection. Okay. So I had to pull it out of my Batman collection. So this is I the, love that cover. I do love that's, that's a pretty that's a nice looking That's a book. wonderful cover. So this is like this is a as I said, probably a 1015 because the spine is just shot. It's like the the spine is but the cover itself like except for this tear right here. Yeah, piece gone. Yeah. Uh yeah, piece gone I mean. Uh it, presents really really well I, I i was super happy to get this copy now i've seen ones that are one five uh, like a, like a point five that are really horrible looking and this one looks way better than them and it sold i got this for about half of what those other ones went for well you you got a hell of a deal i i like the way she looks i like mm. the way that they look and the yellow background uh i i just really like and then, it and then this is the other one that people go for this is the, yeah, the same. You have kind of the same uh, consideration on the spine on both of those. So this right one's actually a, this, this one has like the same kind of piece. Yeah, it's weird, isn't that weird? Um, yeah. But um, this one's actually a higher grade. Um, this is a one. It was for that Batman. You know that Batman thirty something that I had. The yellow cover had the same kind of a chunk missing out of the spine. It's like somebody so this, grabbed it. It's like somebody grabbed the the book it, with the thumb. And they yeah. pulled on it and the thing came off. I mean, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. So this one, uh, this is the first bat cover appearance in Batman title. Yeah. And this is her first cover appearance altogether. Cover yeah. why is it so like Batman looks is, the yellow cover is the big one because it's the it's the first cover appearance of Catwoman. For it some is. reason, like that yellow cover, Batman looks like Spanish or French to me. I don't know <laughs> his face. He's got a very squarish jaw. Like it's really is that weird. is that a Sprang cover, Alan? Uh, I think so. Dick Sprang, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Or is it Mort Wessinger or something? I don't uh, know. Win Mortimer or, or yeah, Win Mortimer. Sprang. Yeah, I think he's, it might be uh, look I'll up. Check. Somebody. I'll check. He's Batrock the Leaper. <laughs> he's Batrock. Uh, I like Either that. Wind I Warmer like that. Or Dick Sprang. Actually, it might be Wind Warmer. Looking at it, uh, Robin should be saying. Uh -huh. Yeah, Robin's always <laughs> taking the abuse. If you actually look, it's always Robin that's getting abused. It's like it's like uh, Batman will always use like uh, Robin as like a human shield. <laughs> it's like. Help me, man. Human meat shield. Yeah, it's meat shield <laughs> is, Robin. Which is the one? What is the? It's actually it's a Bob Kane pencils with Charles Paris. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. I didn't know that. That explains a lot. And February, <laughs> it, it was on sale February twenty fourth of nineteen forty seven. Okay, and it's April. Uh, and the editor, the, the editor in chief in this time frame is Whitney Ellsworth, and Whitney Ellsworth was the guy that was instrumental in the uh, Superman series uh, with with uh, George Reeves. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, Whit Ellsworth. So, I, I think Batroc is a cool character, by the way. I thought that Batroc was really good in uh, the movie. When he I, I liked, I liked him Captain too. America. I liked that fight scene that he had with him, where Cap mm -hmm. says, "Okay, let's go." And I really, I enjoyed that that fight sequence. And I, I, yeah, I really, really did. You see the the what if where it's uh, it's Captain Carter and Batroc? That's pretty cool. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, they have the same sequence, but it's Captain Carter and Batroc. You had well, something cool. to show, Alan. You have another one to uh, show. I was just going to show. This is the other key that you guys should would chase after. So this is Batman. Make it be. Make it be. Bat All right, wait. This is Batman thirty five. And this is the first uh, appearance of Catwoman in the new costume, where okay. she gets that 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 cooler, like the costume that we know her for, instead of that stupid cat mask. And what year is that one? 47, 46? I believe it's like, yeah, something like that. Uh, 35 issues. So what would that be? Like, like uh, 43, 44? 
Was it? That doesn't look like a 43 or four. The logo. Yeah, no, it looks small. later than that. It looks later than that, doesn't it? Um, look it up, somebody. I don't know. I will look it up. It's Batman 35. Batman 35. So this would be, like you said, what was the one for 42? When did that come out, you said? Oh. Uh, okay, what, what are we asking now? What? Oh, Batman 35. When did it come out? Like 40? 1946. 1946. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay, yeah, Matt. Matt's really fast, too. You got it? Uh, 46. So I didn't know what year. I'm, you know, but... Um, well, you're yeah. only off a year. You said 45. That's pretty damn close. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was just basing it on the number, like doing the math, right? From I, I think you have, uh, every second month, right? Mm. Do you have Same Detective two, 211? 211. What's Detective? It's the last 11? Golden Age appearance of Catwoman. Oh. And she does no. not appear again for another 14 years. Wow, because she was naughty. Uh, they the Comics Code Authority established that Bruce Wayne's relationship with Selena Kyle was inappropriate. Oh, guys, so was, I, I, you know why? Can you can you can you because she was a villain? She's a villain. Why would a hero be with a villain? Oh, yes, uh, this, this this you printed it out. <laughs> My goodness, I, well, I did because I, I, I wanted to, to, to actually look it over. Uh, if you actually, this is the actual code, uh, and there's two pages of this. Is it two or three? Two. Two pages of this, of all the stuff that you can't do, you must not do, or else you, you know, you fall, you fall a, a foul of the code. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about it much because Brian, be uh, because, because, Alan, because yeah. Alan is going to, is going to really go to town on this. We. We were brainstorming about it and and basically had a revelation and a crack in, in the veil of secrecy surrounding the Comics Code Authority, the secrecy. It was, it was all about three letters that cracked the code, actually. It was ink. So, uh, <laughs> it was ink. And, and uh, so I'm, uh, that's going to be a re I'm really looking forward to Alan's Wednesday show for the, mm -hmm. for the Q and A and that. But if you read the actual code, it's incredible that even any book in any way was 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 printed <laughs> was ever published, <laughs> and, and 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 both and both Alan and I came to this all the same also the same conclusion, is that with the superhero books you couldn't do anything, but the romance books sailed. They didn't care. They didn't care. They didn't, they didn't do anything to the to the romance books, and it was in violation of the code. Almost every single issue was was completely a foul of the mm -hmm. code, and they still got the stamp. So I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. So your Batman thirty five that you showed, Alan? Yes. Uh, also, is the first appearance of the battle between Batman and Robin and the mechanical T Rex that decorated the oh, Batcave that wow. to this day? That yeah, that's still that's still in the sits cave, in the, right? the Batcave. Yeah. Yeah. The T-Rex wow. is still in the back here. I believe yeah. it, and I, I believe it, it, it opened it up. But and yeah. the giant penny is from a story called the Penny Plunderers, and I believe that's in a world's finest. I can't remember exactly, but that's, oh, that's where the cool. giant Lincoln penny came from. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, I think I yeah. you know the the back cave with all the little like memorabilia trophies. Cool. Yeah, yeah, the trophies. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I I didn't realize that I I. Yeah, I didn't realize uh, the T Rex was from this. Actually, yeah, I was just looking up. I was looking in Key Collector about the cat with something. Like, oh, there's another. Oh, hey, that's kind of cool. <laughs> I just picked up a very cool T Rex book. Um, I was telling Stephen about it. Uh, I had the very first appearance of the Nazi T Rex. <laughs> okay, the one from. So, uh... It's it. Well, it it was it was a one shot. <laughs> It like, okay. It was like uh, in Clue Comics number four. Basically, uh, it's like the boy prince, and he has this like Colossus guy that helps him. And so the Nazis, in order to defeat this boy prince and his Colossus, uh, they make a robotic Nazi dinosaur. Okay. <laughs> but it's, Nazi it's really cool. robot dinosaurs. How talk about yes. 
there is there is real literature at work that here. Is, I it, mean, it, it, high it, literature is at have, work. Have here. you guys seen the 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 short movie Kung Fury? Yes, I think so. That's I think amazing. It, it's got yeah uh, you know, dinosaurs and robots and kung fu. It's all eighties themed and there, it glitches Godzilla. out like an old video tape. <laughs> Eat off Zilla. That's very yeah, good. yeah. So yeah, so I, I mean, you, you said the Nazi got the Nazi uh, T Rex. I was thinking of what's that? The the something from the moon. That's where the Nazis are oh, hiding Nazis on the moon. Nazis on the moon. Nazis on yeah, the moon. Nazi, yeah, Nazi. Yeah. Uh, it made, it made an iron or is it Iron Sky? No, something very, iron. Yeah, it's Iron. Uh, it's Iron. Iron Sky. Iron Sky. That is a great yeah. movie. That so they've made a movie. series out of that, right? And there's yeah. a there's a T Rex in that too, right? Yeah, but you're thinking, Stephen, you were thinking about the werewolf Nazis, um, like from the from outer space or something like that. Yeah, and Susan <laughs> Susan said when she saw those covers, she says, "Oh They're man, crazy. that's what I want," you know. And yeah. I I said, "I don't know how to get them. I don't know where they are." Yeah, no, they're pretty cool. I I actually got all signed copies too. Do you the have those at hand? Bought... Do you have those at hand, or no? Uh, I know where they are, but it's um behind like um. Some no, don't, don't, stuff. don't, don't. It's too too much. Too I've much. already mangled. I've already created a hole in my wall. <laughs> well, uh, I uh, uh, I just uh, you know, I have to say, I really do very much enjoy uh mm -hmm. these fridays i really do i enjoy showing and talking so you don't and, like the mondays you only like the fridays is what you're saying i i i, <laughs> I, I i'm trying in my own uh, incomplete way to, to compliment you that i really I enjoy like this venue stuff. to be able to talk uh, uh we can talk amongst ourselves and share with the hobby and share mm -hmm. with people and with stuff we find out and a, a lot of the stuff that we have is all history based and it's the history. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'll never forget that when I first was collecting firearms, uh, you know, all the hardware, it's fine. But the, 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 this advanced collector dealer said, mm -hmm. he said, you know, you think that all this stuff that I'm showing you, that's where the action is. Let me show you where the action really is. And he opened up this bookcase and it was just filled <laughs> with, with, with history books. He oh, says, wow. This is where this is where it really comes alive to understand the times and the things that are going on for when these when these guns were, were available. And I look at it the same way with the history of for the comics. I'm very, very cognizant. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. I always say suspend your disbelief when you see it. When you go to a movie, you can suspend your disbelief and enjoy the movie, which is fun. Sometimes they make it so you can't suspend your disbelief. Or the mm -hmm. or the actors have become so uh, repugnant for for public positions or things that they've done that you can't look at the actor uh, and not think about what the the person is, uh, sure. and it, it ruins the you know it ruins the thing. But but the history of it, where the books come and how they come and what's going on and how the kids would have been at, when they were reading it, really, I I I I, I do my best to basically put myself in that position because when I read the book and I think, what am, what am I as a kid thinking about in 1944? Yeah, it's like the battle of the bulge is going on and I'm reading the Superman story, you know, and I'm thinking to my uncles in, over in Bastogne or something like that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it really is, it's sobering and interesting to then have that. And then the radio is playing little orphan Annie or Batman or Superman or whatever it is, is being, on the radio it's it's pretty mm -hmm. amazing stuff of that time yeah i agree um so yeah so um what was i gonna say um i think we should wrap it up it's okay like um, you gotta go like this up. this yeah oh yeah 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 you were talking about this before. <laughs> See, like, we end with a bang Okay. That's beautiful. <laughs> but just uh, uh, tomorrow, by the way, I'm doing an, a really great interview. My uh, guest is probably the best guest I've ever had. Um, I'm interviewing myself. <laughs> no, okay. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, it's an interview, self-interview. Uh, Alan, tomorrow. Alan, tell me what you think about that. I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> I've been wanting to ask that question again. Okay, what is the answer to the question? I can't tell you what the answer is to the question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't ask me those questions. We gotta go yeah, like this so. now. Oh yeah, is this uh, what's this one do? Laser this light show. 
I didn't do laser try, lunch. Try two of them. Do them like I feel like I'm doing some like hail Satan thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> supposed to do laser light show behind you. I didn't. Huh. But the thumbs up one. There you go. That one worked. Very cool. <laughs> I'm special. I feel special now. Um, I know the heart one works really well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he exhaled hearts. Yeah. So, yeah. So, a heart um, exhaler. What but, fun, uh, you guys. What a lot okay, of fun. So, Thank um, you. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Um, what else is going on? Um, yeah, I got a cool book as well that I, I'm going to actually pay for tonight. Um, oh, so, cool. yeah. Uh, I told I already told you about it. The 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 uh, the blood the bloodshot one or blood yeah bloodshot right isn't that blood or death shot death shot dead shot death shot yeah dead shot I always mess up the names dead shot That's blood right. shot <laughs> like there's all these shots. so eight o'clock Pacific you guys yeah, can catch so me on, on uh, yeah on what's bronze the, yeah, bronze what's, age nerds what's, what's the, time the, is it now? what time is it now it's uh, uh it is six thirty so it's nine thirty your time nine thirty uh, nine thirty my time it's, it's 9 30 your time right now but 9 30 where you live yeah it'll okay, be 11 so o'clock one Eastern. hour one hour and a half away from now. one and a half hours from now yeah on bronze age nerds channel okay, that's an order that's order. american or canadian it is that way alan yeah it's the time price variant um, <laughs> so, um, so you know, we're starting a new bi-weekly uh show called uh best coast comics and what, and what, what is the show going to be about geek tonight? Group, geekerific? What are you uh, doing? We're trying to do uh, kind of uh, geek culture, uh, positive, just positive stuff that's going on. I'm uh, talking about, um, I think a couple of topics for tonight are going to be X Men 97, uh, the, new, the new animated show for Disney, uh, CGC okay. acquiring the JSA uh, autograph. Oh, that, that's the end of CBCS right there. That's going to be a chance in them big time. All those green copies that people can send in and get yellow yeah. now for them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I, also, we're going to talk about the new uh, Penguin trailer that just dropped today. Oh, I didn't uh, see that. So, I'll have to watch that. Yeah. So the Penguin TV show is going to be on HBO. Oh, um, it's a TV show. It's, is it yeah, it's going to be a TV awesome? show, but it's going to have Colin Farrell. Uh, it's going to be playing TV. It looks really good. Uh, it's set is in the it, same Batman the universe. Do you know, What's that? Did you, did you watch the Gotham series? Uh, no. This is set in the Gotham the Robert series. Pattinson the, the the Robert Pattinson universe where, oh, okay. uh, with uh, yeah. I what love the called? chasing with that the Batmobile. Batman. The Batmobile chasing with Pattinson, yeah. that Batmobile, the Road Warrior. What a yeah! Great... It's very uh, you know, early uh, Batmobile kind of feel. I like. love that. And do you know right. what I did? I I choked up. Mattel had this the radio control version of it. They had a limited edition run of, That's why of I said so many very Gotham one. Yeah, on Gotham. <laughs> it was a five hundred dollar toy and mm -hmm. it's radio controlled and it has this back cave and it has this the it has oh, wow. it, it it'll actually has water vapor coming out and lights and all this other stuff and it can go twenty five miles an hour, you know, and has all the big wheels and it's distressed you know uh to show like it's been you know that he's driving the batman figures inside holding onto the wheel oh wow all this stuff i've never taken it out of the box oh you know what so Steph, cool. next time we have we're on you need to show your your batmobile the one you showed oh, me the uh the the uh, 89 for the, that paul restored it yeah i will yeah show you should show that it's so cool i will do that uh, he, he added some lights uh, like a diode to it didn't he yeah, he has yeah, a it's, diode, it's, a diode out from the jet, and a diode underneath it, and oh, wow. he cut out all the windows, and then he put glass in, and then he wired wow. the whole thing up, and then it did a spectacular paint job on it. Uh, the guy beautiful. is. A, uh, I just. I matter of fact, my post today is uh, half of my diecasts. Uh, uh, I always like. I always seem to go to the Beach Boys with Little Loose Coop. I always like to have that. You know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as far as it, but uh, but Alan, you're trying to uh, to wrap up. I'm gonna. I don't want to. <laughs> it's okay. After after I after hear, shade hear, on you here. Sorry, I get you guys talking about something else. Thank you. That's okay. cool. Okay, so uh, thanks guys. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. And Thank you. Um, check out Big B's. Uh, Big B's. This guy. Wait. 
Yeah, me. One over. <laughs> One over. On Bronze Age Nerds that. channel. Bronze, Bronze Age, Age Nerds. Nerd. Um, yeah. So check that out. Check out my interview tomorrow. Um, I hope check out my it. post on Instagram about Alan's shirt. And check out, um, <laughs> yeah, the post uh, that it was. By the way, we never said this, but it is we should have said this. This logo was designed by Big B. <laughs> so, so that's the extra thing here. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody so, said that on the, I posted, and they go, "You designed that? What?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's really you, cool. You did that. You did it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so I, wow! Wow! Yeah, it was great. So, um, okay. Excellent. So, thanks everyone. Bye. See snaps. you later.